yo, you already know what it is. My man J Mo wilding out on the guitar. We out here. My right hand, Ox Sampson. And we got we got a special one, y'all. Um, I give credit where it's due. This guy is a legend in the fight game. You can't take nothing away from this guy. Takes on all challengers. Any sport. When it comes to combat, he's gonna show up. Platinum Mike Perry, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Living. I was I was gonna say, man, I'm so tired of these damn podcasts, man. I don't wanna do them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> But so look, but man. y'all gave me a great introduction, oh, man. I appreciate it. Fire, man. Appreciate you. And um, before we get it, get into it, I want to thank Mike for pulling up. Um, and once again, I got to give credit where it's due, man. You can't take nothing away from this cat. Um, many of you guys probably don't know, or many of you guys do know. I've known Mike for a while. I've been training with Mike for a long time. I've known Mike since the very start of my. MMA career in 2012, my very first fight. He was the main event on the card. I, it was my first fight. Um, and ever since then, we've kind of crossed paths and we started training together early on. And I owe a lot to my career, to this guy right here. And I mean it, man. Um, wow. This guy, on his dollar, had me traveling the world, cornering him. At the time when I wasn't qualified to, I was just a teammate. I learned a lot that I used now from him and a lot of invaluable knowledge man um over 10 years appreciate you mike number love hey you doing your thing bro you like I, we always thought you would you know because it's crazy to think where we come from and how you have to take silly l's sometimes they just happen and it doesn't have to be a l or it could be, you know, a lesson. I hate to say that cliche stuff, but but it's real though. But yeah, it just happened. Got to happen to you, you know. Lots, you know. And um, what what's crazy about man? There's so much w between Mike and I. Um, fight game and life. We've we've grown as fighters. We've grown as men. But like he said, it's kind of cool when we think. When I think about the very start of my career. And the adolescence of your career, because you were already eight fight veteran at that point. I think you were six and, or seven fight. You were six and one main event amateur. I was making my debut, but it's crazy to think about all the niggas that we done fought with, all the prospects, all the good amateurs, all the good pros that ain't around. You know, and it's and it's crazy to think how we're still trucking and you at the highest level just knocking down barriers. I remember. Uh, in 2014, I was in West Virginia. I came back down to Orlando and I had seen Mike. I was staying at Alex's house. I pulled up on Mike. Mike did a little skid bed. He was home. <laughs> and he's like, man, I wish I was a pro, man. I'm 0-2 at the time. He says, I just wish I was a pro. I'm like, nigga, you going to be good. He's like, man, I just wish I was a pro, man. You Y'all pro. At least y'all making money. Y'all pros. Mind you, this was like early. This was like you remember summer or this was like before winter time in 2014. A year and a half thing in the UFC. And check Mike's record to start off. Arguably, this month, I thought he was crazy. Travel to your hometown. Who's the best guy here? He's getting knocked down in the first round. Correct me. What is it? Six and no? Six first round KOs to, to the big show? Or is it seven and no? It's... Seven and zero. Seven and zero, and and I'm I'm gonna give him his flowers here before we get into it. Tough fucking fights at that time where we were in our career. John Manley, you, if if you watching, shout out to you. You took a badass whooping at home. Um, he fought Neil Magny on the on the, <laughs> the on the tough show. Went to his hometown, Wait. knocked his ass out. Um, Frank Carrillo. Like, uh, the list goes on. All first round violent KOs came to the UFC. Uh, Connor uh, versus Nate Diaz card. Viral knockout. Couldn't get any better, man. But 
credit where it's due, man. Hats off to you, man. Like right. I've always been inspired by you, even as a training partner. And I've always looked up to you in a fight game, and I still do, brother, because you're killing it. It's because, um, see, this is where you tricked me, because your name is Philly, and you like the Fresh Prince, <laughs> but you ain't from Philadelphia, and uh, it's something about me being from Michigan or something. It's like a northern swag, but you're from Florida, though. But you for but you a New Yorker. I'm, That's what it is. Yeah. Well, you so, know, you're so, from Florida when you're actually from New York. That's what they say. <laughs> <Fact. right? laughs> That's but, how you know. And and but I, I I did a lot of growing up in Florida. So like my whole fight career was here. So you started fighting before you came to Florida. I didn't fight until I moved here. So um, I I grew a lot here. You ain't fighting school. Yeah, I mean that shit don't count. To Bullshit. Me. That shit don't count. I fought, Bro, I had a fight club after school in Michigan. No, nah, in Florida. That's lit, though. That's what I wanted to ask you. All the guys, we just watch people watch YouTube, and we just fought people after school, and um, we did training videos. Was and... Alex down on this shit? No, but he went to a popka, and and then he might have went to a cop at one time. No, he went to a popka, and um, but like I had never trained with him until much later. I didn't know where he was working at, but then when I trained with him and he sidekicked me, I was like, "Oh, he's done something." But during the fight can or the fight club in school, y'all weren't tapped in back then. I knew of him, like in school, like we would walk past and say what's up, and uh, but we didn't become friends till like I think I went training with him first time at like seventeen. But you had a you already had martial arts though before you trained with him. You already um, had training, no? No. Nah. Uh uh-uh. uh, I just uh just did it myself on YouTube. I watched Anderson Silva videos. I watched <laughs> UFC. Um, I had gone to a boxing gym here and there, and then that's that's that was like my first training. I went to South of Popka. I went to the boxing gym School of Hard Knocks with Christy Martin and her and her husband. At Christy the time. Martin from West Virginia, famous boxer. Is she from West Virginia? Famous boxer. You know, like the female Mike, boxer. female Mike Tyson. Yes, that's white lady. Nah, that was I, didn't know, I didn't know she was, right, right. I didn't I know she was out She had a South gym in South of Popka. That's crazy. I didn't know and that. that's where Craig Duncan was. And I had known Craig Duncan through my sister married, um, like, his girlfriend at the time's uh, brother. Right? So uh, Craig was dating this girl. And then I went over to the house. I was a little kid. And I remember meeting Craig. That's crazy. Damn. Shout out to Craig. You was just training yourself off of YouTube? Yeah, same thing like John yeah. Jones did. Yeah. But I did go to the, yeah, I went to the boxing gym at like probably 17. And I ended up at but a- you have ATT fights. Longwood. But you had fights in, in Michigan, no? At, I don't know if it was at 17 years old. It might have not been legal until you were 18. And I did have one fight in Michigan. It was in like Lansing or something. And there was, it was like a Hooters and there was a tent out back. There was lots of people there though. And I beat this dude real quick, but he was like 0 3. That was my first fight ever. That was your first like organized fight. Yeah. How many fights would you say was unorganized before you had your first fight? Oh, like, man, I I remember because I lifted weights a lot in a popka. In high school, and we did the after school sparring and stuff. And um, man, side note, to, I don't want to cut Mike off. I used off, to but drop I, a lot of people. I got I got I got He said you should lift weights. This nigga mm-hmm. had a cigarette. He outed it. We went in the gym. I was a construction worker. There was bro. 315 pounds on the fucking bar. If I'm lying, I'm dying. I've seen it myself. Mike said, oh, let me see if I can hit it. Just came home on the bench. I'm like, what the fuck? I don't know if you remember that <laughs> at um at um the gym y'all used to teach at UFC gym. Yes, I'm like, what the fuck is this? Nigga? The most I no ever bench up. was like 350. That was the most I ever bench. That was pretty nuts though. I used to bench back in the day in high school, bro. I used to lift every day. I had one of the high. I was like 150. I was benching 305. So, you sound, that's God Devon. That's, that, shout out to Devon. That's <laughs> shout out shout out to my nigga Devon. <laughs> <laughs> Devon was like that. Um, yeah, man, that's dope. That's dope. Actually, I had a question about the backyard fight thing. Like, yeah. do you think that that got, because I did that in high school as well. Do you think that got started because of the Kimbo thing in Florida? 
Yeah, I mean, I I it's think uh, Masvidal uh, and obviously Kimbo, they're the OGs of of the videos online, but they're not even right. Like there's there's I other was, old school yo, bare knuckle boxers. There was I was watching that shit low key way before, and I mean they really set it off. Like everybody, like you said, that Fights video had eighty million yeah. views. But I was watching bum fights, seeing the motherfuckers. You're getting, right. You would watch the same shit. Snakeandcheese dot com. Get through yeah, the porn yeah, that you see some violent shit. Whatever the <laughs> crazy websites were at that time. Man. Yeah, eat bums world. And this shit like guy, that. this guy had one of the first fights I've seen like sanctioned. Like it was ridiculous. So he was at UCF. I just saw it. They had a fight club. Yeah. It's the most <laughs> dumb, obnoxious shit I've ever seen, Mike. So, the UCF so he was telling club. me about this fight he had. What year was that? 2007. I remember him talking about it when he came to Fusion Mike, all them years ago. It was ago. a legit. What year was it? It was 2007. 2007. So he showed it to me. These niggas are in like the library. I'm not lying. The media center. <laughs> they're they're lined off. That's fire. Like a like this is a club in UCF. There's like all Paul's people on one side, all the other guys' people on one side, <laughs> and and the the people officiating. These niggas are fighting, elbows, knees. It's yo, the most obnoxious. Yo, so it would never happen right now. No shin guards. Paul knocks a motherfucker out. Yo, yo, yo. So hold up. Paul comes comes back from the first round. I'm like, yo, Paul. All right, man. Every time he throws the jab, you gotta go over with the right hand. Uh huh. Every time he throws the every time he goes left, you gotta go right. Uh huh. Every time you take a step back, take one step. Uh huh. Uh huh. Ding ding, go back out. Woof, woof, <laughs> woof. Throws all that shit out the out the window and just it's starts obnoxious. throwing fucking hooks as hard as he can. Look like he never learned one technique in his life. Knock that nigga the fuck out. I said, oh shit. Whole crowd went crazy. We had half the fucking crowd it, in there. It made no sense. Oh, that shit would never fly. <laughs> uh, Yo, that is the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life. I'm not being funny. In school, y'all niggas are fighting literally in the media center. Knock dude out. One when the first time you dropped nation just but there's no one there to regulate what was that shit was crazy to me. Shout out to my nigga Justin Incredible. We we used to we used to just we used to just fight out in the courtyard, yo. Niggas be we fight in the fucking little uh the shit between the dorm rooms. The little common yeah, 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 yeah. area, niggas' heads be bouncing off the fucking end tables and shit. Well, the <laughs> library is dope. I mean, we was outside and we did that shit. Did you yeah. did you uh get in problems in high school from fighting or anything like that or not? Uh, no, nah, man. I fought after or you know, or I got a, or I got away with shit or in the locker room. Yeah, you go in the locker room, nobody can hear you and shit. Yeah. Percentage wins losses before you learned how to fight. What do you say your percentage was? I'm undefeated. <laughs> look, yo, look, look. This is my guy, right? But these niggas be lying, bro. Every fighter I talk to, they never lose street. Fight. But I could, I probably believe my. But look, I'll be honest, man. I was a 50 50 guy to guy, man. I was at 60, 60 40. You know what I'm saying? Like, you was a basketball player. Yeah, but look, here's my this problem. This nigga came out What's happened, though? Like, I, I, ooh, I, I'm bleeding a little bit. No, you know if you lose a fight. You know if you lose a fight. Nah, bro, we're talking about loss. Like, I lost one of my fights to this dude named Big Andrew, bro. That man was... Throwing you all across the cafeteria. He threw me through a salad bar. (laughs) It it depends on the rules of where you are. Like he said, some people's like, if you're whoever's leaking lost, they don't care what happens. I'm not going to dwell on an L. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was listening to a song on the way here. He's like, fuck it, I'm on one, bro. Like, whatever fuck-ups I had, Fuck it, I'm on one. I'm Facts. I'm keeping it moving. I'm Facts. working towards. Facts. I'm not. I don't have to think about not or no or don't or L or. I don't have to think about those. I can think about yes and positive and money and fucking growth and fucking is good too. So all that. <laughs> so all look that. The, to 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 piggyback off that, and this is gonna be big for people that don't fight that aren't in our minds. How do you? One feel after you've taken a loss, and how do you recover from that? I know what it feels like. I know that's the lowest low, <laughs> right? But how do you feel in that in that space going into your next fight? I'm reminded of Alex. He he's carrying himself well, and and that makes me think of Conor McGregor too. It's like you know how would a guy like this, you know, he's. I just think about what he said on camera before, you know, we've all watched it. He's like, oh, I don't, um, I will not shy away from it. 
and stuff like that. Like you, that's the that's the time your mind is so open to everything, and you're you're looking at it so. You're trying to figure everything out. And I always come to the same conclusion, like, fuck it, just keep it moving. Cause the as a fighter, the journey itself is the reward. It truly grows you. And there's nothing more valuable than your own self growth. Word. That's a fact. Talk that self growth shit. And and what I learned from him and Alex specifically. Okay. In, in in my career, I be way too analytical about things, right? And I've been around these guys forever. And this because Mark always saying you gotta move lateral, and, and and no, he don't say analytical and shit, do he? But nah, but he do he say so? No, Mark Mark says Mark says shit like that. Um, Mark Mark's Mark's fifty fifty. He'll be super analytical, and then he'll break it down. You know what I'm saying? In the layman's terms, but mm. you. From amateur on, right? I would always see you guys, right? I'm like, man, Mike just fought last week. This motherfucker fighting again. Mike, and I ask him about, yeah, I'm going to knock him out. And no matter who he's fighting, I'm like, he can't believe that. Like, he can't, just because, right? Who and is then, this who said that? Me? You always say that. <laughs> you always, every time, anybody I mean, you fight. He just said that before but the camera look, came but on. Pete, <laughs> but, and after knowing him for over a decade, he believes it, right? But what do I be saying now? I mean... If the knockout no. comes, cause I'm swaggy P now, dog. I be, I be on my boxing shit. I be in that bitch on my Mayweather. But more so, it's the mindset, right? That I learned from. Like, just go fight, Phil. We train every day. Go fight, y'all. I ain't never seen y'all say no to a fight in the history of fighting. I remember, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dime them out now. So this is how me and Malky got cool. So I reached out to Malky when I was 0-2. Mm. And you were already popping. And Malky called me. And I said, hey, Malky, what I got to do to get to the UFC? He goes, you get me a six-fight win streak, we'll get you there. That's what he said, right? And I was hyped at the time. Like, Man, he's dealing with all these high-level guys. He's He gave me that, that conversation. That's pretty dope. And now at the level I'm at, even for him to like waste five minutes of his time is – was was a big deal when I'm thinking about it now because yeah. he didn't have to do that. But I remember at times my relationship grew with Malk and Abe because like, yo, Phil, man, you know, like they would reach out to me, ask me about Mike. Yo, when you Mike's in the gym, you know what? Like, yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm going to tap in with you, make sure Mike, you know what I'm saying? Because they know they get a call to fight Ngannou on a day. Mike going to be like, hell yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they were like, they would tap in with me to be like, yo, is, is Mike... Mike training, Mike's going. Let it, I'm like, yeah, yeah, he's you train doing this, doing this, but that's just a testament of the mindset. And later on in my career, I started to adopt it more. Now I'm, I'm there. You know, I, mean? I believe in myself now. And for a long time, I didn't. As much as I trained, I didn't believe in my skill set. Right? I didn't. I didn't. I wanted to be there. I didn't think I could. But now I know I can. Now I know I can fight the best guys in the world. I know I'm one of the best guys, if not the best guy in my weight class. I know I can beat any of these guys at any given time. But it's crazy to me, before you had that skill set, before Alex had that skill set, y'all thought that from jump. Like, and y'all believed it. You know what I'm saying? And that that shit goes a long way, man. And, and a lot of people watch, you know, unbeknownst to you Because if you could have punched Craig Jones, what do you think? I'd have beat the shot of Craig. I'd have beat the diarrhea dog but shot But what happened? I'd have killed him. <laughs> I'd probably kill him. When Craig, older you and when, when, his, when Craig shot on me, face. When, when Craig shot on me, I just put my hand over my leg and it was just like, I just stopped him. And I'm like, oh my God. Like right then I would have just went, bah, 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 like really violent. But he didn't. He Ground karate. Out. He choked me out in a second. Shout out to Craig Jones. Um, from a person who went down a different path of the fighting and I feel we have an unreleased song. Shout outs to us and shit. Facts. Um, <laughs> Every L is just the beginning of the winning streak, my nigga. Like, it's and he's just, on a winning streak right now. And that's how you gotta look at it. Every time it's like when you travel into a, a, a location across the country or some shit. Every time you stop to get gas or whatever, you back on the road, back where you going. If you headed for a championship, if you headed for a W, if you headed for infamy, history, you just gotta look at them L's as just a pit stop. And like. And something else you said that I wanted to touch on that I think is the problem with the fight as a nigga who's been watching boxing and been involved with boxing and fights in general, 
fighters are supposed to fight. Like, I feel like uh, Mayweather kind of put poison in these kids' minds and they think, like, I'm going to fight one time a year and all that shit. I think the reason why Mike got where he got it's because he was willing to take the fight. Facts. This He's young boxer at Technique is going this week to go fight four to five fights in a couple of days. Who? That's what these young boxers do. Oh, LeVon. Yep. LeVon's going. Shout out to LeVon. Kids. And, incredible. And, and amateurs. Is he amateur or is he pro? He's an amateur boxer. You can't go to the Olympics. That's what I was thinking about the other day. It's like. You know, when we choose to go pro or whatever and, like, how my amateur career was, I told LeVon, I was like, yo, I never had the opportunity to go fight five times in a in a week. I, maybe a, one weekend and then maybe two weeks and another weekend I had a f MMA fight event, you know, and that's four-ounce gloves, maybe or maybe not shin guards. Amateurs was like pros in some states. And, you know, Look at, you know, the skill it takes to do that and go to the Olympics. And they're not Come really on. getting paid. It's just if their parents are really good at what they're doing is they get, um, you know, like marketing or, or they get money from sponsors and and they use that money to take care of the kid and, and set the path to lead these kids to be more legendary, to become a triple C type guy. You get the Olympic. And how many people... There's never been a UFC fighter that's had an Olympic gold medal for boxing. No, hell no. That's nah. what's next. That's hell what's no. got to come next. It does. And it will. Shit, shit evolves. It will. But nah, that's... And when people forget about the Olympics too, Olympics is amateur. Like, it really, it's it's amateur, whatever it is, until you get to that. It is, I mean, essentially, you're not a pro. You know what I'm saying? Right, but you're the best Oh, of course. Of course. World. Of course. Of course. Because you're, you're they fight 100 you're, times. You're an elite level pro. Um, you damn near pro because you fight so much as an yeah, amateur. Yeah, but but you're at you're at the beginning stages of your professional career, hundred mm -hmm. percent. Like you, you're a gold medalist. You're an elite one percent of the one percent of the one percent in boxing. A million percent. You're elite. You're the Canelos, the fucking whoever. Devin Haney's, exactly, exactly. Uh, Shakur Stevenson, yep. uh, absolutely. Still Fimo, uh, uh, Lomachenko, uh, Anthony Joshua, Francis right. Ngannou. This. Weekend, Shout so it's like, who y'all got on that one? So, I, 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 who should win? Me, it, it's so hard to bet it. Like for me, I think Anthony Joshua's gonna win, right? Right. Especially after watching Tyson Fury, right? He got the watch. Yeah. So too. he's like, I'm not playing with this guy. In my opinion, this is what happened with the Tyson. In my opinion, Tyson Fury is like, I'm about to punch. Tyson on this can guy. take a hit though. He no, he can't. He can and Tyson and can. I don't think I'm Anthony sure. can. But it's like yes or no because he he recovers well. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because take essentially he, he got dropped. You know what I'm saying? He gets right. dropped a lot. Right. But here's my thing. I truly feel they're gonna come for me. Pause. I feel like Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight to ever live. I think he's super skilled. I think he is has amazing footwork. Um this is this is this is what I right. saw. I mean, he's he in the, he's in the, he's, yeah, he he's, is. he's 100 percent in that argument. It's not even it, because otherwise it's probably <laughs> so Deontay look, so Wilder. Look, so watch one second. Tell me two other guys, right? And you're gonna Deontay and you, Wilder and Tyson cool. and Fury. Then, and that, yeah, I'm saying you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna rake off guys that have a bunch of L's anyway. But you're talking a guy that's fucking six eight with a 90 inch reach with footwork and and a jab and defense. Here's what I think happened in my opinion. I think Tyson Fury was like. I'm about to punch on Francis Ngannou and had zero respect no, for him. No, it's crazy that Francis was able to perform. It was. Perform. Look, what, look what Tyson did in that fight. Show me one other fight. He runs to the middle and starts punching on people. He's a, he's a boxer. He moves. He uses feet. And that's what he did. He disrespected Francis got in front of him, just started boxing can't with him, give him excuses, and got and got. I'm not gonna give him a excuse. He won the fight. Apparently, he out jabbed him. He did. That's he beat he he beat him six rounds with a jab. After that, after he's that's an what boxing is that is boxing. He could have done that from the from the start to the end. I think Joshua is gonna respect him off the bell and box. And but I think that's gonna get Joshua caught. The more like you saying you it, I'm like it. Francis can actually do this. He one. can. He can. He can. But I just think the skill Joshua set is can too far. Too. I just think he's gonna be he's gonna be too cautious for Francis. I don't think he's gonna give him an inch. I think he's Crazy. gonna be boxing and moving and bo happen. we can we could. True. We Let could. me tell you what happened in that motherfucking Gypsy King fight though. Mm -hmm. He's a lazy fat fuck. 
then he came into the ring and he thought he was going to be lazy Bro, and he thought he, he, he thought he was going he thought he was going to lean on Ngannou, right? He thought he was going to lean in Ngannou because Wilder he did the first fight he boxed he boxed Wilder, right? And got dropped whatever whatever. Second fight he put on weight and he said, "You know what? I'm going to lean on him. I'm going to walk forward and I'm going to put the weight behind my punches." He thought he was going to do the same thing to Francis. He's like, "This dude can't box. This dude can't fight." The problem is he brought the fight in the area where probably he can't fuck with Francis at all because he was wrestling and during the boxing match. So every time he leaned on Francis, Francis took the the fucking um, frames and moved this nigga around. And then he punched on him and it hit him with power he ain't never felt before. Francis is probably the hardest puncher in fucking fighting sports today yeah. and dropped his ass. I feel he- like the, the grabbing punches, like if, you know, I didn't really watch enough of the fight to... To really have a great opinion on this, but like people always say it to me too when because of the bare knuckle to like oh use the clinch. Listen, that is not a punch. Facts. That is a sissy girl slap. Facts. I don't clinch. I might grab to get you to grab, and now I'm in my shell and I'm finna punch you. <laughs> okay, Mike, ready? I I love that he said that because I said the same thing. If you got a, a man in what front can't of you do to in JDS. a fight, you got a man in front of you in a fight, you get one free punch. Do you want to clinch him and punch him or you want to fucking punch him in the open? What did Kane do to JDS? Mike, what? answer that question. I'll let you answer too. Okay. What would you have to... Kane? In a fight, in a fight, any fight, you're in, a, you're in an MMA fight, you get one shot with your right hand. You get it however you want. You want to clinch him and punch him or you want to stand at range and punch him? Boxing is you punch from the ring. Exactly. And that's what But that's what you're comfortable doing. I'm not that comfortable clinching and punching either. But some motherfuckers are. But here's my Jack thing. Dempsey. No, 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 look. Right, okay. there's sometimes, Rocky, Rocky sometimes Marciano. It's they worked, <laughs> but in my opinion, when it's worked, that other guy didn't know how to box. That, that, that's for me, he didn't respect him, right? Because look, after you get knocked down and you get up and win the fight with your lead hand, just the jab. You could have done that from the if you from the start me of the fight with one hand and yeah. try to punch me with the other. I got two hands for you. Exactly. <laughs> I'm finna punch you. But what hand? But if I grab you with one hand, I'm grabbing one of your hands or one, at least one of your shoulders. I mean, even Mayweather used to do it. Well, if you fight and ha- now that's hand fight. Yeah, now yeah, that's something like, different. Look, like I, I don't grab in the neck. Yeah. You there, ain't got my arm. There's arms. there's boxing, but up there's cl- other than the neck clinch. Grab. The clinch, that clinching the neck. That's Muay Thai shit. So you're talking about you like clinching now, the, now the double bicep. clinch like, in boxing. They breaking you up. The bicep. The, the and remember, like, you can't like, do this in boxing, right? You're not allowed to push anyone off you. And you're you're not a you're not allowed to be doing no Muay Thai clinch and pulling head anyway. Pause. You can get away with the shit though. Eh, but like, you gotta I push with the punch. I don't push think his game plan head. was I'm I'm about to use but, my weight. But that's exactly proves my point though, because that's what I'm saying. In modern boxing, that shit is not really part of niggas' games. Like most people don't do none of that. So when he came in trying to lean on friends, that's not what he did. He what wasn't he, expecting it. Nah, what he did was. He said, "I'm be-. like, look, when the guy comes in the gym that says he wants to sign a waiver and train, you think when I'm in front of him, I'm in front of him like any other pro in my gym, a Mike, a Alex, a, a Julian, or any other high level pro. I'm, I'm like my rematch. Julian. No, I walk right to him and just punch on him. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like you suck. You know, I don't. I'm gonna walk to you and do whatever I want. Yeah, that's what Tyson did. I agree with that too. And he I was like, no, I'm, I'm a way better boxer. I agree and then that was part of he it. got clipped and was then like, he straightened Whoa. his ass up." And that's what I'm saying. But, he he changed his whole behavior. He got fucking nah ah nah ah all jokes disciplined. Aside, I agree man. with you. He is the best of all time. So look, are Mike, they fighting again though? <laughs> I disagree. Or is he fighting? Fight Joshua. He's fighting now, Joshua. That's right. On Saturday, what the hell? Am I, I agree about? with you. He's the greatest. But look, I'm, and I meant to. I want to ask you this, Mike. You're the first person, unless y'all could tell me the room census. I don't know anyone else that left the UFC and. Became bigger. On a rocket. Nah, ship. It's different. It's rocket different. ship. And Ganu got the the great win against the best heavyweight. Whatever you built your name even more prominently based on the skill set that you developed. That's really what like, it's different. Like Ganu got bigger, but yours is different. You legitimized the fucking sport. How do you feel right now where you are in your career? Like how do you feel? Are you content? Like, how do you feel right now? Like, where do you where do you see it's yourself? The easiest money I ever made. E- Luke Rockhold, Venom easy, Page, easy. Eddie Alvarez. I, well, I I had fun. With, Luke Rockhold. I had fun fighting Venom Page. I wanted, I've been Page. wanted to fight him. 
Shout out Venom Page. And yo, this is a different. He's a good cat boxer on the couch. That, but look, Luke Rockhold, MVP, Eddie, fun, fun. That's Go gonna be a great. <laughs> I'm excited for that fight too. MVP's debut. Your opinion. Your but opinion. Kevin Holland's gonna be too experienced for him. Who do you also? Oh, so who, this is good insight. So Mike, if you guys Kevin don't Holland's know. really good with his range. The way that he hit Joaquin Buckley with he's got this long skinny. It doesn't look like it can, but the way that that right hand put down Joaquin. Look, I know that insane. range brings power. I'm a testament to it. So I know Kevin Holland has one shot power and he is just as long as me. Pause. So you are taking Kevin Holland in this fight. But MVP is incredible with his kicks. I didn't get to or have to face those kicks. Mm. I would have tried to grab them. Um, I mean, he took my back in the fight like once or twice and the ref was like, ah, don't punch. <laughs> don't, don't punch from behind. But I was ready. I was like gonna throw like a spinning something. I was gonna try to punch him, but they weren't allowed technically so in my you... fight. So the MMA fight is kind of different. And then after I fight MVP, he goes out, and kicks that dude in the leg so hard he just that was it. He was tight. He's, He's he couldn't kick. And, he was ended tight. his career one kick. Wham! Your knee is in pieces. Yeah, I think Vin Page is gonna fuck up. I like. Kevin but Holland, Holland is, is a kung fu <laughs> black belt. <laughs> Go Holland's a kung fu <laughs> black belt. He got hands. He a black belt in jiu-jitsu as well. And he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. But look, but look. I fuck with This Kevin is a Holland high, heavy. high level fight, man. And but people, he hasn't been the same since he went to 170. Holland think? was, Holland had this power at 185. Holland, mm -hmm. he knocked out Jacques Ray, man. He, Damn. He at 185, he had this power. That shit was crazy, that little and off Jacques, the ground. I mean... Hit. I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, I don't want to talk about um, that. Shout out to Jacare. Shout out to Jacare. I seen Jacare. He Ray also be some fluffy like nothing. He smoked. Boom. Knee to the belly. It's over. He Elbow. Smoked. Bong, bong. Fluffy. Look, once again, tip my hat where it's due. Kevin Holland got a murderous row of niggas. He's that he good, don't man. He's, He's got really a lot of He's, fights. And, he, and he'll fight anybody. Keep scrapping. What happened when he fought Wonder Boy, though? That's what's going to happen when he fight. Unless he had he, a good fight with Wonder Boy. Unless, unless, unless he goes for the takedown. He got punched on, my nigga. And that's what's going to happen. Unless he, unless he changes his game plan, it goes for the table. Look at the fight game, though. Anthony Pettis beat Wonderboy. That's, that's true. Crazy. That's Anthony's true. Really Shout out good, to Anthony though. Anthony's <laughs> style Yo, and technique is beautiful. Shout out to Anthony, but he looked like he got hit by a Tahoe before that. Before he yes, ended that right did. hand, he was getting fucked he looked up. Like he was getting jumped but by the, the thing, whole though. corner. <laughs> and, and, then, and then my nigga came through and knocked him out, though. <laughs> Superman <laughs> punch <laughs> off the cage. Crazy. That's a punch he's been practicing his whole career, so you got to give that to him. He but knocked look, him out. Clean. I was there live. That's how we went crazy. Ah! But look, Mike, out of. And I, and I'll be honest, man. Like, I keep it a buck now. I'm 33 years old. That's fucking wild. Um, you old. Man. Yeah, but you do a lot of other stuff, bro. Yeah, I need. To, nah, you, I need bro, to branch you, out you, and broaden nah, my horizons. You are, you are, bro. You're killing the game. My you mindset is on fire. You're killing the game right now. You're killing fighting, the game right now. Man. Um, check the watch. You're killing and look the game. what I'm about yeah. to get the. You know, I'm about to get the fight though. That's gonna be tight. Another Alvarez. <laughs> Wait! Oh, oh, oh! The, I'm gonna punch a hole in him. Oh, the fight you just got? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Um, Mike, if if you guys don't know, Mike, Mike's the main event April 27th. Mm -hmm. I always keep up, keep up with everything. He's fighting Tiago Alves, right? Tiago Pitbull, Alvarez. That's a that's a legend. Um, <laughs> in the fight game and Pitbull. I, he's a good guy. I don't know him personally. I respect him as a martial artist, but I find it hard pressed that uh, he's gonna beat Mike simply because. I know they were supposed to fight a long time ago, and he didn't want to fight Mike. Um, I know he didn't want to fight Mike because I was there. I was in Mike's corner, and he didn't show up to fight him. He didn't show up. Um, I was there. I saw firsthand. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna put my guy Maybe out. Maybe he has the hunger he wants. <laughs> look, or, look, right. But he needs now, the boxing now. But he needs the boxing, and but, he ain't gonna. But now, right then, that was his best opportunity. You're in the peak of your career. Right then, that was his best chance when you were young. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying inexperienced mm -hmm. at that level, and with all of the rules, everything he could use his jitsu, everything. But my uh, Mike fought. Alex Reyes, yeah, <laughs> annihilated the guy. This was in Pittsburgh, 
But he was supposed to fight Tiago. I was there in the corner. He had it was a corner. free birthday gift that and the UFC game. That it was my birthday. That was lit. It was like though. September 14th or September 15th. It was my birthday. They literally and 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 look, not for nothing. This nigga was good. He just didn't belong in there with Mike. And he was just a guy coming up. He was on a win streak. I think he was like an eight. 13. Fight. 13, 13 fight, fight win streak. No, no, he was he ain't no like he was nice. He was like that. He was a 55er. He came up. Tiago was supposed to fight. First hand, I know. Look, just be honest. I know he didn't want to fight. I was there. I heard it. I heard the conversation on the phone. And they were begging him to show up. They were begging him to get on the plane and fight. He didn't take that fight. So with deep that deep down and you're talking a guy that you, it's going to be Will versus Will. You, it's going to be hard. It's going to be he's going to have trouble in there. How did you feel during the Luke Rockhold? That is a large human being. Mm. I watched that fight and I was like, I think you were just as shocked as us. You were like, oh, you hit him <laughs> once and he said nah. You that was a you you landed flush. I was like Luke Rockhold. What the you fuck? made him quit. Bring it. <laughs> you made him quit. That bare knuckle Bring feel it. different. How did that feel, man? You hit a nigga with a glove. That's a champion. He beat That Wyman. was my cleanest performance, and it was at 185, which is where I'm fighting Tiago. Me and him are fighting at 185, which is light heavyweight, I think, in boxing. Yep. And uh, I move good there. I'm going to, you know, pump some more iron, lift some weights, you know, get my bench up to 350 again. Okay. Uh, what are you walking around at? Get my pull ups up, and uh, man, I recently got sick. I was like 199 before I got. I ate some oysters and must have got a parasite or something. Man, that shit tore me up, dog. So you got about two months to the fight. I was eating and drinking good for a while since the last fight, and I got to a comfortable rhythm, man. And I I got to like 199, but. It don't matter because I was at the gym today. I've been training a little bit. I felt like I was looking solid. And uh, I just got to keep trying to force myself to eat since I get to go up. I want to cut from at least like 195 to cut to the 85. That's crazy. Like that, and that that's, a, that's a healthy lifestyle. I wish. Can, can I interject a thought? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Uh, Jake Paul needs to fight you. Like y'all y'all need to fight. That's like, because even like, with, with what just happened and like nobody, I feel like. It's a waste of the buzz that he has. And Jake Paul fought the. Like, you know, Michael I mean? Bisbee made a good point on Jake Paul saying how, you know, yes, boxers fight journeymen. And in boxing, there is real journeymen. Like, you know, guys 10 and 15, guys 20 and 15, and, you know, you fight records. And sometimes when you're 1 and 0 oh or. 2-0, and, oh, and Jake's, what, 9-1 and one now or something like that? And uh, he fought a guy 17-2, and two, which the record wasn't terrible, but the guy had nothing for him. When did that? When did he go 17-2? and two? How many years ago? And they brought this boxer back in, and Michael Bisping was like, you know, these guys fighting these journeymen, these people they know they can beat, you're paying them to come in and take a fall Absolutely. pretty much. Uh, they weren't doing it at the top of the bill selling it pay-per-view for everyone to watch and, you know, telling people you're taking over the game and you're beating. Valid. Okay. And then call it out the number one fighter out there that Benavidez can't even get his hands on. And, you know, well, Jake Paul, fight Benavidez. Benavidez probably wouldn't do that. Jake Paul would laugh at Bene at Benavidez would laugh at Jake Paul. You know, he wouldn't. The game's They're, so fucked. You know, up, they bro. might be friends. I don't know if he, he I think I talked to Benavides. He don't he doesn't hate what Jake's doing. But that last one was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> I didn't watch it. I didn't I, buy that. I, didn't see Nobody I knew I would shit. see a first round something yep. online. So would you want and the thing is like clearly he's gonna want the gloves on. Like, are you open to the gloves? Are you obviously you he's not doing it with no <laughs> gloves? So absolutely, I think I would break him with a pair of any pair of gloves on. I even went ahead and said, I beat Jake, and he's 200, he's weighing in at 199. I ain't never seen him with abs. And he going 20, 205, 208 sloppy. after he weighs in. Man, and I happen to say, you know, I'll beat him as fast as he's beating these guys. I believe it. How? What? I heard you guys sparred though. Yeah. Uh, it we went, he had an eight-round fight. 
Um, it was a week before I fought um, uh, D-Rod. Mm. And I was 180. He was at least 200, maybe 195. Um, and, you know, I came out throwing some flurries. He hit me with a couple of sniper shots and showed me his skill in boxing is, you know, he plays the outside. He runs around a lot. And I put pressure on people. And I wasn't boxing at the time, like, for the past year yeah, since ready that for moment. UFC fight. Now I'm boxing. I literally, I grappled that morning. So, but I, you know, six rounds, going into the sixth round, they're like, hey, Mike, this is going to be the last round. I'm like, oh, thought you had an eight-round fight. Mm. Like, I would want full rounds of work. Yeah. Uh, maybe he hit mitts after, did bag work. They had more to the, the workout. But to me, that was him withering, and I was flourishing in the last rounds. From rounds, you know, three, he hit me with a couple of good shots, and I, I – Think I? I think I wanted to feel it. He hit me. He hit me. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. Come on. I gotta be the only guy that Jake had sparring with that that happened to him. A, a thousand percent. It's a good shot. I know he knows how to knock people down with it, but you know. And then I watched him fight Anderson Silva. Live, I saw that, and I was like, "56." I was like, "I, I was just like, you know, Silva doesn't have that type of boxing." Nah, and how old is Anderson Silva? But he beat, he beat Woodley, a real boxer. Yeah, Junior, somebody's son. He beat. Yeah. Oh, he did. He did. Hang on. How old is Anderson Silva? That nigga ain't a real boxer. Forty. Forty-eight. Damn, he is forty-eight. He's forty-eight. That's crazy. But nah, I mean, that's another one. Like. But but deep down, and the second fight with Woodley. I mean Woodley. I, I still got to talk. I'm to baffled Woodley. by that one. I'm baffled. Too. I got to talk to him, man. I talk to I Woodley all the to time. I'm like, yo, be it's honest. Not, like, I understand. You, the, <laughs> you did that shit over. Like that shit was cr- that nigga. <laughs> knocked, took that no, dive, but, nigga. but you can off let these nigga. motherfuckers put a spell, cast a spell. We all watched them receive that Rolex. We all watched this buddy buddiness happen, and. You got to remember when you're going in that ring, you you know, it's a, that's fighting right there, right? It's like, you got to play the business side, professional, be everybody's friend. Everybody wants to see you. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have time for everyone because, you know, I'm so important. And then when that fucking ding, ding. cage door locks. And that's the mental side of it too, because I do better when guys talk shit to me and like, and like, uh, try to act tough. That's why I told Leoto Machida, and he said he liked that. He would tell his sons that because I said, I said, what you say about my mom? That's my get you going. Yeah. What you say about my mom? <laughs> I could do that to anyone. Yeah. Like that. Boom. That's what I like. I don't like. I do. I do worse when guys are like, "Yo, it's love, love." You know, I like when guys talk shit to me, you know? Because I feel like it just puts me back in a place where I started, where nobody believed in me. I'm 0-2. I'm losing amateur fights. I'm not supposed to be here. So I like when guys give me that. Like, oh, everybody said, I'm going to walk through him. Jason Witt. Walking papers. Sleep. Uh, The other little kid. Everybody's, oh, he don't don't belong over here with me, blah, blah, blah. Sleep. Walking papers. Anytime people like, I so I like that. Let me just, that's out there now. Fuck I'm it. good at both. I know. <laughs> I like when people both like. Both sides. Yeah, I'm getting there. But in boxing. See, I'm not playing. There's there's more faults in MMA. I, I wish I could box right now, man. I'm at the peak of my career. I f- wish I could lead the UFC. And bo- I wish there was Zoo for boxing. Is Ryan and fucking Sugar Sean going to happen? Ne- Come Fuck on, man. No. Never. Ryan is fucking crazy, actually. Nigga lost his goddamn mind. Did you I see that shit? about to... Do you see... Oh, Haney, 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 Haney about to tear him up. Have you seen what's going on with, with all the stuff? Have you seen what's going on with He him? got kidnapped and they get, they took his phone. They, and they kidnapped and just, him and forced him to and watch children. And they posted some stuff. What? Get naked. That's what he said. Out of his own mouth. That's what he said out his own mouth. Forced him to watch children. I have not heard that part. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. That's what he said. Nigga said he got kidnapped. 
<laughs> what they call it? The, the hey, fucking yo. build a bear group or some shit like Where that. that shit? Where did you hear that? What's that shit called? Yeah. So Mike, the, the left builder, is right the, and the right is the left. I don't know bird. how it's like that it came that way. So you gotta click the left, and that's actually your chair. Yeah. The the fucking rich people kidnapped this nigga and it powers that be, took him to an island, made him watch children or some shit like that. Oh, yeah. Yo, he's That's what sick. he said out his own mouth. He's sick. And, yeah. Sean Strickland even was like, yo, I apologize. Yo, this thing is going through some shit. Did you um, say you apologize? You said you uh you believe him? Yo, Mike, you ain't you ain't <laughs> never you ain't never trained with Sean you ain't never trained with Sean Strickland. No, man. So I went over there. Sean's my friend. I like Sean Strickland a lot. Um, I went over there, I sparred with him and Kurt and Chris. And they were asking me about you. And I'm just like, look, man, y'all, for what, unless you train with Mike and you ain't never been in front of him, the first time you're in front of him is not going to be what you think. A hundred percent. He's one of the the guys. Well, Sean Strickland's probably one of those guys. He is. He is. You're right. He is. Sean is that that guy that when you watch him, you're like, all right. But then when you're in front of him, his timing is so offbeat. He punches you in between your rhythm. He's very fast. For a guy with no abs and love handles, he's fast as shit. And and <laughs> and uh but I told Chris, I said, man, Michael punching you, bro. I'm just letting you know. Like, cause I sparred him. I was like, he will punch in you, bro. Sean, I would love to watch you guys go he's at it. He's bigger than he used to be. He's big. He's Chris better. got better. He you, went through the ringer. Stylistically, though, just from training with both of you guys. I know my boxing. I'm very confident yeah. in my boxing. If it's boxing, I, you know, Sean and I don't even know if Chris Curtis's jujitsu is good enough because, you know, I got I got maybe better hands than Rodolfo. They don't think you can grapple though. They don't know you can grapple. But here's the thing about Chris. Sean is borderline impossible to hold down. Impossible. And Sean has a very fast jab. Like very fast. Yeah. Like like but I got something for that shoulder Elite roll, fast. Though. But here's the thing. But but this. Chris. No, no, no. But yeah, I, I do too. But but Chris, I just think he he takes too much shots. So like he'll get close to you and he'll put his hands here and he'll and he'll roll. It's just too many free shots, especially with guys that like to rip rip it off there. But Chris is good. Shout out to Chris. But they were both uh talking about, you know what I mean, sparring with you or training yeah, with you. Yeah, I know. They both they all want to beat me up. <laughs> just like everybody else wanna come get a piece of the king of violence until we in the ring and it's fair. It's fair and square. It's a squared circle, Talk sir. That shit. <laughs> Yo, look, I'm telling y'all, man. Till it's look. fair and square. There's Talk. a way. And I got a technique and I'm sharp and I'm quick and I can box and I like all the parts of it. I've the only person, right? You you've taken losses, obviously. The only person though that I've what seen no. firsthand. Yeah, never lost. <laughs> what lost? Never lost. Never lost. The only person that I've seen firsthand that didn't falter mentally when they fought you was Luke. And it was weird because I remember I was in the corner. This is Uruguay. He fought. And when the bell rang, you hit him with a big overhand off the bell. And he literally, he was here. Boom. And just like, respectfully, he, 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 he was right back in the mix. But respectfully, y'all were both, y'all both mirrored each other with that. Those first two rounds of that Luke fight was some of your best work. It was, that, it was great, especially fight. that great first fight. round, the way you man, was fuck moving. MMA, and man. <laughs> fuck, I knew. He, are, I you knew he are you making? Are you making more money? These guys, why out here in the streets? Why, why is it I'll fuck MMA? I punch your ass before you ever even see it coming, man. I'm gonna win. <laughs> why is it fuck MMA? Though? Are you making more money? These UFC guys or what? Because I've always loved boxing, and I like the bare knuckle shit because. At this point, I've got an advantage on everyone. So tell us without giving away I've had professional bone fights, and I got an advantage in it against everyone. I think it's a professional No, that's a fact fights. because no one's doing it. Between a guy like you who's at the top of the game, right, what is the edge without giving away the edge that you feel that people don't understand about bare knuckle? That, can I, can that I you a had guess? an aha moment? Can I Go take ahead. a guess? Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm curious. It's just a difference, like... When you get hit with like a, a gloved hand or whatever like that, it's more of concussive. When you get hit with the bone and it it, it does something, it feels different. Like even if you take your hand and just press it into a bag, like you could feel the knuckles impression. And I think the same way Luke Rockhold's been hit in his mouth a hundred times. You know what I'm saying? It didn't hurt as much as when you hit him like that. I, when you hit him with the 
In my opinion, this is what I think it is. And this is from firsthand experience being able to train with him. So, like, I what I love about watching his fights, they're all, unless he's fought the guy before, and I don't know how many fights you've had, like, Mike Perry versus so and so too. It's usually like the first time you fought a guy, right? I don't, I don't, I don't know if you fought a guy Rematches. twice. Yeah, I, have, I haven't had any. And that's even Rematches. better. So what I love is there's a there is a moment every time me and Julian watch it, we laugh that they're in there like, oh damn, this ain't how we were. He mapped it up like this shit kind of different. I love it, but but I'm used to it, so I prepare for it and I know how to keep away i know how to like you know what i'm saying like mediate it but guys they go right in they think they see the reads and then around later he's still there he's still in their face the thing, in my man. opinion this is what i think on the outside looking in you can't really wind up as hard as you can and crack someone right and I, I, a lot of these guys when you watch them they're like hum, 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 hum. And you'll watch Mike in between hitting everybody. Boop, 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 boop. He be hit. Boop, 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 boop. Next thing you know, cut, cut, cut. Bleeding out of there. And I, I'm, I've noticed a lot in BKFC. I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but you're catching people in between a lot. And guys will be here, MVP, dancing in front of him, ready to shoot. Boom, down. It was oh, and is and he's doing something. That's working. And a lot of guys are trying to hang. And Mike's in between. Boof, 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 boof. And it's working. Clearly, the motherfucker hadn't lost. Eddie Alvarez, like, he got they, shot they, in the face. The, motherfucker. Damage is, the damage is just different. Like, you know um, what I'm saying? Like, he, when you hit him with the not shit, for me. he just keeps walking through it. Oddly enough. You, he just keeps walking through it. Me. But look. When, when they feel the damage, when they feel the damage, they're just like, I don't want to keep feeling that no more. This motherfucker would be like, but what look, damage? But look, though, Eddie Alvarez... Eddie Alvarez looked like he was like, a little faster than me. He looked me, crazy like, after that was one I round. I felt my pressure building up on him, and I was overwhelming him like a boulder. And he was on the bottom of the hill. And it was I the was, second round he got KO. He was trying to come up the hill because at the end of the second, I shoulder rolled some shit, parried a punch, jabbed him. I hit him with some body shots, and I looked at him when the bell rang. Oh, and I got figured you out. And he did not come out of the corner. That was the end of the second. Because I was finna hurt him. So two rounds. Two rounds. Four two minutes. Two two minute four minutes. That's not even MMA round. Eddie Alvarez out of there. And Luke was one? Three and a half minutes. Oh, the second round. Mm hmm That's Second crazy. round. That's crazy. It ain't so pretty no more. Ain't no, ain't <laughs> it's a difference, man. It's so like there's niggas that beat niggas up, right? They, they can fight, right? They, and then there's niggas that beat the niggas up that beat niggas up. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Because you got a different mindset. It makes sense, bro. I guess. Nigga. Beat niggas up that beat niggas up. <laughs> so, that reminded me of the earlier y'all was talking about uh, Fury. You said you, they're going to come for you because you said Fury's the greatest. Fury's the greatest current. Mike Tyson is obviously the greatest. Like, the fuck, that's simple. Thinking. It's factual. Yeah, right. And that's my twin, bro. Me and Mike. Yeah. Go go twin. back and watch bro, the fights. Muhammad Ali, the greatest of all time. He's not here, brother. Oh, greatest of all time. He's Muhammad not here. Ali. God bless the day. Mike is here. Come on. Facts? Mike is here. here He's yeah. surviving. He's here. He's the best on the planet that there ever was. Yeah. And Tyson's even named after him. And oh, he is Tyson Fury. He is the greatest current right now because he had great fights with other great heavyweights and he beat them. And he went away for a while, was undefeated. And then, if you talk technical, Mayweather's the best. Yeah, I'm money a, I, wise, yeah, Mayweather. Yeah, I'm business. talking. Yeah, I was talking heavyweights, you know, but Mayweather, but heavyweights, for sure. Mayweather for sure. But Usyk, I mean, in Usyk my might opinion, have something to I say like Mike Tyson. Minute. I love him. Hats off to him. I love what he's turned himself into. I love uh, how he is a beacon in the MMA world, in the boxing world, in the combat sports world. Like people seek out this I hope man, he's having fun, far and wide, and he's making good money. Shout out to him taking care of his family. He but, looked crazy, incredible when he fought. Roy Jones. Roy. Yeah, and, and side note, he looks amazing now hitting pads. I don't know why he hitting pads in his boxer briefs, my nigga. Like, 
with the beef hanging out. That's crazy. But <laughs> aside from- He always from, used to do that little ass short. Nigga, he's in the Hanes. Yeah. Hitting with Hadouffle. <laughs> did, uh, did he had a couple? No. <laughs> he had his whole beef swinging, hitting pads. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what is happening here? A, that shit was crazy. But he's the greatest because you can do that. Nigga, nah, nigga, put pose. some shorts on. Aliens land right now. I'm tasting Mike Tyson. Hold on now. They be in the MMA gyms looking crazy. Facts. They ain't got no clothes on. Val. Val be, Val. Shout out Val, man. That's my guy. But Val be training, man, in underwear, man. <laughs> that shit is blasting. That shit's Jamaican brother. Val, right? be, Val be having the what? shock doctors on. They did Listen, that. that's why I go in there. I'll be boxing. I'll be sticking and moving. Nobody touch me. Nobody catch me. <laughs> Get off of me. Get. Get, get, get. This nigga Val, man. Val be wearing the fucking, the, just the cup protector, man. I'm like, nigga, you going to UFC? Put some shorts on, dog. Like, come on, man. Shit nasty, Train dog. harder when you keep your shirt on, your clothes on. It's Dude, harder. Man. You sweating more. You're heavier. <laughs> we got to we gotta make some new tracks, bro. I got to actually, I'm too old to start rapping. It's too late, But look, here, here's what you got to, you got to do what I do. I got a cheat code. That nigga behind the camera. <laughs> So, it, what people don't understand is rapping is not hard. Making music is hard. Mm. Anybody can. I can give you a beat right now and say, Mike, you got a week. Write a sixteen. You'll put some shit together. I just freestyle that bit. <laughs> but but you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But making a song with a hook, Brit, all kind of cool shit. You gotta. That's different. Yeah. Hey, real shit. Drop a, drop something in the comments if you want. If you want to hear Mike Perry. Yeah, we gotta, yeah, we gotta. Yeah, we yeah. gotta. I was thinking about that. Uh, that, all the all the people getting rich, they be out here. Yo, chat, tell us in the in the comments. Uh, That's because they live. be having live chat. I don't They're get live. how them streamers. I don't get that shit. Doing that go live, shit, bro. Uh, during the Miami, they be making man. mad money. They be giving Let's away Richard Millies and Lambo or Lambo trucks and. Y'all ever go live on, like on Overdogs? Um, one time we did, but then it was like everybody was like, I don't know. They just canceled it. We went. And then it was like a can't they canceled it. I, don't know. I swear. Can you rap, my nigga? Sometimes, man, it depends on, <laughs> on how the drink and and the weed hitting, you. and oh, you I know, you. I you know, shot Devin Haney is funny because he he was jumping on Ryan about the oh man, what about the kids, man? Like, hey, man, is we are we adults here? We so, wait, what did he say? A lot of kids know that people smoke and drink. Ryan Garcia was like, I smoke, I drink, and then. Devin Haney's like, what about the kids and this and that? But I remember after Devin Haney's fight, he was posting this like, um, yeah, weed page a couple of times. They obviously paid him to do it, and you had to like sign up and be eighteen or twenty one or whatever to sign up for the page. But you knew it was cannabis. He don't and smoke or drink. Devin Haney, that's what he said. I mean, and he's Muslim, so. Oh. I slum lake and definitely. Listen, man, life, life. I like, I like a little smoke and drink, man. Sometimes life be hitting, and I just gotta chill out. And then I sometimes I just be dropping bars. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're throwing a kid's birthday party at your house, is it, is it, is it, is, it, is there a section for the adults, or is it strictly like all kids, or is this like a gangster kid party? That's funny. Uh, no, I mean, so I got a a birthday party this weekend, and there's gonna be a bar. And I got to go buy whatever drinks we're going to have. And there's a bartender that's being paid so they can open because uh, you can't open your own drinks. It's like a facility we rented and it's the laws or something like that. So we got a bartender and they'll be making drinks. Now, I was thinking about it today, like, damn, I can't get lit, my baby girl. You can't. Right? <laughs> what you mean? You can't. It's your crib. Yeah, you absolutely no, can't. No, it's not nah. at the crib, though. I'm going to be the good angel. Don't, don't do business. it, Mike. <laughs> okay, that's different. Don't do it, Mike. No, 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 no look. Yeah, at the crib, you Zoom could. the camera this way. <laughs> Zoom I, the camera. I was drinking in the last fight that I was kind of coaching, and I felt like I was doing okay. It's like it, the drinks just kind of came to me, and, like, someone was literally delivering me beers. And I just handed Which them fight? to me. I was the one that just happened. Oh god! We got <laughs> and then, <laughs> and I wasn't fighting, but yeah. someone else. No, was. I'm the same I way. Was, I was coaching. Shout out Chopper Reed, drunk in every corner, motherfucker. Like, he used to coach you, I think. You know, what I mean, he used to be signed under him long many moons ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, I hope Chopper's doing well. Shout out to Chopper Reed, man. Um, Chopper Reed hit me with a ashy spinning heel kick. <laughs> Chopper Reed. 
is probably the only nigga that knocked me out. Fucking clown. And I told him I was so mad when Chopper Reed and um somebody asked, I told him I was have Mike on. They said, uh, you got a funny story about Mike. Uh crazy story, nigga. I got a lot. But one story about Chopper. Chopper knocked me out in training. I, here's how I got it. It wasn't a. I was. KO'd. I wouldn't even tell people that. Fuck it. I don't care. It, it was a while. It was a while ago. It was a while ago. But all I remember was like that, and I was standing there. And then when I came to, everybody was like, "Feel you good?" I'm like, "Damn, Chopper, fuck." That's, that's all I oh, remember. Spinning heel kick. Spinning heel kick with his ashy ass foot. I was more upset that his foot. Touch my you face. don't like spinning hill kicks to the day, but this nigga, but, but we were training. We were training. All I remember, I was like, we were moving around at Fusion. This was like 2000 when I just got. It was 2016 before the gym was what it was. And all I remember was like, we we're moving around a little bit, moving around, moving around. And I'm chasing him, and then like I just remember like, like that, and I was just like, and I was like, then when I, I was standing up though. Then when I, everyone was like, yo, yo you good? I'm like, and I said, Chopper, I'm never, no matter where I go in my, I remember like it was yesterday. I said, no matter where I go in my career, world champion, whatever happens, I'm never training with you again. And I've never trained with Chopper ever since. Because it's spinning hill kick? Fuck him. Shout out to Chopper. Shout out to Chopper Reed. Took one off of me. Bro, I was sparring Chop, and Alex was sparring Devon. And me and Chop was sparring. And Devon fell down. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and on, we were like, <laughs> we gotta help him, bro. Yo, man, shout out to shout out to one of my best homies, Devon, man. I was up north and he called me. He was like, Yo, uh, Phil, what time is sparring at Winter Springs? I'm like, why? Then <laughs> he's like, I'm gonna go train. I was like, Well, Mike and these niggas? I was like, ah, all right, man. He went down there. I was on the rig working. That was my first time, I think, meeting Devon. All I get is a call. I remember Mark Nicholson called me. Phil, where are you? You got to come pick up your friend. I think he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I think Alex just killed your friend. Oh, <laughs> I'm man, like, what dude. the fuck? And I don't know what happened. I guess him and Devon were going at it. He kicked Devon and fucking dropped him. But. Devon's a good trainer now. Yeah, he shout out to Devon, to get man. People in shape and healthier. Yeah, man. Devon got hella transformations. People losing two hundred pounds. Um, killer cardio. Uh, killer cardio in MMA. If you're in Palm Coast, Central Florida area, you tapping with my boy. Um, he'll get you right. But he, I got a funny story, man. This is this is a pretty good good one, in my opinion. Um, at Fusion, Mike was sparring, and uh. We're Mike sparring with whoever, and I guess they they got the sparring started escalating. And all I remember I hear Julian, like, all right, all right, all right. Julian's like, all right, all right. And oh Mike was started punching on some. Mike was punching on somebody, and then Julian's like, all right, Mike, 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 Mike. And then Julian jumped in and saved the guy that Mike was about to punch on. So I don't think Mike fully got to wild out on the kid. Because Julian literally jumped in between them. So then it de-escalated. So, <laughs> so then Mike walks away. Mike is walking off the mat. There's a pillar right outside the mat. Mike jumps, smashes his head into the wall. He goes maybe nose deep. And I forget what you said, but you screamed something. He was like, you screamed something like, that, that's what you want? Bro? And then he walked away. Everybody's like, and what's crazy about that? Those are structural beams. There, there are metal beams in these pillars. There is a window like this that there's drywall and other shit. And <laughs> he perfectly, we, we still got in the gym. It's his face. Of his, fa of his face. And it's up there. Yeah. So you'd be like, the nigga had to jump, headbutt. And by the grace of God, those beams, he's right in the middle. <laughs> it was So that's what broke my nose before Luke A threw that knee. Look at that. My nose two look, weeks, look a week and that. a half. A week and a half before Luke A fight. I Never did lost. that. And then the knee just kind of moved it over because it was all already in pieces. Look at that. I didn't see look, and I didn't even put two and two together. And then two weeks later, we go to Uruguay and then and that fight happened. But that was pretty intense. And if you touch that wall, 
You're like, nigga, it's solid. Bro, I'm you, he beat niggas up. Yeah, beat niggas up. <laughs> that wall will take most niggas out. <laughs> but, not but we keep it there. I think they put an arrow on it, and then it says your name on there. It's pretty cool. That is actually dope. Yeah, man. CTE is real, bro. When you're training every day and you're getting hit in the head, and sometimes you just, you know, you just lose control. And um, it's moments like that that you got to look at and be like, wow, what would a smart uh, <laughs> business person do um, if they were you know like you think about fighting like business like oh you know taxes this way taxes that way and um, you know that's just strikes being thrown points here and there and points on your your credit score and fucking you know you don't want them to hit your shit with points you want to hit them with points and Fucking don't get hit back, right? So and don't hit yourself with. The How do you sometimes you can fall into bad habits when you're doing training and you're not taking care of yourself, not resting. Uh, so there was a time when all we did was push, and in my age now, I'm older, I'm a father, and like I got shit to take care of. It's more important for me to go home and deal with the bills and shit like that than, you know, trust me when I go to the gym and we gonna punch on each other is different we go for it and how how often are you sparring makes a now? difference sometimes two or three to, i mean mostly two times a week that's not bad okay that's where i'm at sometimes not for weeks copy i'll just do train i try to just do training and get myself to this you know i'm used to not getting hit that's how i prefer it I'm just relaxing every day. I'm enjoying my couch time. I love a good movie. I love a good snack, a good meal. So I stay hydrated. Uh, shit, I like a little alcohol sometimes. I think that helps with before you even even have pain to suppress. Uh, not saying that I would. Sometimes I train drunk just to practice it. <laughs> just to practice it. But then other times, most of the time, I'm very clear. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nigga spin this circle in the back and you know, shit. Start throwing punches. <laughs> See, look, y'all laughing, but Mike, Mike known I've been I've drank before my fights for a long time. And he was the one that was like, Nigga, you I've crazy. never been able to do that. He's like, you crazy. But I stopped. I stopped as of three fights ago. But up until then. I stopped as three days. Nah, up until then, we had a Pepsi bottle. We got a three shots of Jack in there. Whenever I'm done, bow, and I go out there. Bro, I did it. I, I, I've done it my whole career. I've done it in the UFC. Like, Shout I could, out to Marshawn Lynch, because now I do like a couple pieces of candy before I walk out. Mm. A Starburst, or some Skittles or something. A couple, couple bites of candy, and I've been clean for a week. I do the water load. I do the diet, clean food, a couple bites of candy, I'm, and give me a little boost. I fight ten minutes, but maybe twelve if you're any good. Out of out of all the fights, out of all the fights you had, which one where you were in the back, right before you walked out, or like walking out where you were like, oh damn, like you felt the most, like whatever that feeling was, but it was the most intense. Because I've had fights where <coughs> I've made it all the way in. I'm like, oh man, this ain't really. <laughs> It's hard because I guess it's always intense and I feel like I've learned how to enjoy that because I feel like that's something that you do not get all the time. And, um, mm. you know, like I noticed that there was a difference in my in life when you're about to walk out and fight. And it's easily I could sit, sit here and think about the fights that I had that weren't my favorite. And I'm like, oh, those times obviously seemed intense before, but they could all feel intense. And it's what you do with it. It's how you feel about it. It's how you consume that energy because that's an energy and that energy can either stop you full force or it can, you know, you're you can go through anything. So I hear this a lot. And that's I like that you said that because I my thought process on on walking out is a lot different than other people. I hear this all the time. And tell me how you feel about this. 
I'm your coach. Mike, it's just another day in the gym. We're just go have fun. We're sparring, just like another sparring match. You know, how do you feel when guys I you I know you've heard that because I've heard it in the fight game. Coaches will be like, Man, it's just another day in the gym. Go have fun. No, nah, so last fight that I coached or whatever, and I was saying I had drinks and I'm like, I kind of feel some type of way about it, but fuck it, I'm on one. You know what I'm saying? And it's like I tried to tell myself, uh, you know, what would I want? And sometimes I was like, okay, I would want me to shut up maybe right now. And other times I'm like, but all I'm saying is, you, bro, you're so good at this. You're so good at this, bro. You can do this and this really well. You know, you hit him with one, with some of this, uh, cut some angles on his ass. I just try to remind my brother what it is that he's about to go and do. And, um, you know, I felt like I, and he would, he would say there's only one man to blame. And that's why I respect him so much. Even in something that I hate as much as an L, something that I, I dismiss as reality. Um, he, you know, he has to walk with a smile on his face and he carries himself because he fucking tried and he was doing good and he was looking good. And a lot of people say that about a lot of fights, but it was there, was, uh, you know, and no excuses, but. 40 pounds he gave up in any weight class heavyweight's the only one where a guy can give up 40 pounds how and i was thinking how often does that littler guy win that but i mean alex did win that one before when that guy was that heavy but this guy weighed in 264 he weighed in 226 264.8 Motherfucker, he cut weight to get to that and go above that. And when he ate, I didn't he looked see like him. a brick know, shit house. Alex was know. hitting him with lefts and rights and all types of shit. And it just didn't, it, it was a weighted pressure, which is exactly what I do in a fight. I put pressure on people till that fucking window opens and I fucking stick something through. A bee, a bumblebee, right in your face. <laughs> Imagine getting stung right in your, right in your eye. Ah, <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, man. Like, um, I was yelling on the side. Oh, oh, that's beautiful. Oh, right here. Uh, he was on the ground. I was like, you know, I saw. I was watching him work a little bit, and then I was like, there it is, underhook. You gotta get that underhook. You post it on the elbow. Put the hand up. Walk back to the fence. Yes, get up. Yes. He fucked up. He let you up. Here we go. <laughs> He's putting that jab on him. Though. Yeah, man. But after fighting myself in the in the Amway, man, like he got love, and you can't take that away. And and he gotta he gotta live with that and feel that, man. Like the city loved you, man. Like you got when you walked out, and he and he did that. They went crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like they went. Just as crazy, they they went. They didn't show me no type of love like that. Like, and I everyone felt that love, man. So like, you don't you don't hang your head on a, on an L like that, man. You know what I'm I saying? I lost at the Amway. You the only one winning that bitch. But you I knocked mean, out Nico Price, a seven fight UFC veteran. That was a good one. At the time, you had uh, two fights. Three. That or, was your third for a three fight win streak. I was on three. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Also, the first one to do that one. Yeah, that was UFC. good, man. I was pumped, man. Three fight win streak. And that showed me that I that I belong in there. And I know, they know. I don't give a fuck what they think, what they say. I'm punching on anybody at welterweight. I know it. I Nico know. Nico Price it. could come on over to uh bare knuckle. Uh, he should. Shit. He'd be good. He'd be no, good. No, he's not a big enough name. Nico Price got a big name for he's damn a, sure. Yeah. But he got a when you type in Nico on Google. He has a fucking UFC top finishes that got like, like 20 MMA million math. views. MMA math, cowboy, armbar. Nico Price, draw with cowboy. That don't make sense. You knocked out Nico, put the pressure on him, hit him with the long bomb over the top. MMA math. Bro. MMA math don't make no fucking sense. No. Cause I'll tell you this. When I, I was nervous... The, in the fight camp, I knew my skill set was better. But he looked physically strong when I watched his fights. He would do weird shit. He'd be mounted, and you got to know grappling to know. He would grab a motherfucker's neck and just stand He kind of fought like Keith Jardine yeah. in a smaller weight class. Yes, way. and he's mm. very awkward, just mm. like Keith. And he would, mm. like, do weird shit. Like, and he would 
Like Geoff Neal is a strong guy, and I would see him just push Geoff Neal off him. Geoff Neal, you Jeff. know what I mean? But like, and then he fought Pieta, an eighty-five monster, and he was a he arguably beat that guy, bro. Like, did he beat him? Or it was he he had him quitting. Fucking Jeff, I want a rematch. I, I forgot y'all did fight. Yeah, that was a minute ago. It's a fun one. That was a, that was a, that was. And a, I, don't a, I don't see him throw that kick at nobody else, bitch. Why you kick? <laughs> why you kick me like that, bro? Because it was there, bitch. I thought we was gonna throw some hands, bro. He he acted like he was gonna throw some hands. And he was like, oh no, fuck that. <laughs> That's exactly why he threw it. He ain't throwing the scissors. Fuck her. Right. Man. He ain't used it on Shavkat Romanov. He ain't try to kick him in the head. He had a good scrap with him. He. He was getting them punches. Did off. he throw he any kicks good. versus Ian? I don't remember. No, no, no he didn't. No, he didn't. threw one head kick, but I don't think. And then the Wonder Boy fight, like they be he having, fought Wonder Boy. He'd be like, he'd be taking breaths in the middle of the fight. He'd be like, touch gloves and shit in the middle, like oh, with Wonder Boy, he was touching gloves. Yeah, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff fought Wonder Boy. Yeah. And Jeff. then Wonder Boy fought Kevin. Here, I watched that at the Amway. That was a good fight. It's a great fight. Not for nothing. Do you play the UFC 3? The UFC game? Yeah, I, the fuck only thing I game. play is UFC 3. Fuck that they got game. You on, that's what I say. Not for nothing. You damn near got the Hold on, because I heard I'm on. Hold on. I'm heard, I heard I'm on 3, 4, and 5. Whoa. I'm not. I ain't even been in that bitch, and I'm on 5. Nigga damn. signed that. that. UFC oh. sent me $250 the other day. I don't know what it was for. <laughs> got that like Zufa. Perpetuity. That's lit, <laughs> man. They go in the court for that game, shit right man. now. Man, give me something that's going to help me get uh, in the HOF. They going they going to um, Why don't So, but they pay you for being in the game. I'm assuming yes. I be getting little checks here and there from Zufa all the time. That's my point. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, Put me in the game EA Sports, damn it. Do you right, though, bro. Put me in the game. Right, bro. This nigga got the coldest on. hands on the motherfucking shit, bro. Really? Oh, you don't play that shit? I think I'm gonna bring it back. I'm not playing it, so I'm in the game. I used to play it in 2000 and <laughs> in 2000 and like five when it was Frank Mayer, Shogun Hua, yeah, yeah, Chuck yeah. Liddell. Yeah. I played it back then. Yeah. Xbox 360. The still on there. Yeah, that was lit. But I haven't played it. I'm gonna play it when I get in the game. I'm gonna get in the game. The niggas gonna I'm, take, I'm going to another oh, three fight knockout sure. street. 100. The I'm niggas going. gonna go, take man. the Corey 100%. Hill uh, figurine and put you in. I'd be the coolest. Start the taking them out, bro. You gotta start doing like. Like the Kevin Holland that came in at 185, bro. The one who just came in there and started beating people. We were like, this skinny motherfucker. I know I can do it, man. My next fight, they're going to see it. I can't Talk I can't say him. who. Bro, how's your next weight cut going to be, bro? I'll be good. I'll be good. I'm, I'm ahead of the curve. You, so like, you look like you got yourself in a, in a rhythm. Now I do. Um, last time you put on a ton of weight, you was big. Because I was nervous. About I thought Nico was gonna be strong, and I told I ain't never lifted. I didn't care about lifting. I just said I don't want to physically feel weaker than this guy. That's what I saw. Julian's like Phil, you're not. It, tr you'll be fine. But I just thought he was gonna be strong, and maybe it worked because he didn't feel strong to me. Um, but I was the biggest I had ever been. But I'm working with my man Paul. Man, we've been we've been lifting. I haven't felt sore like this in my life. It's a good feeling though. Um, I'm fighting June first, UFC 302. Uh -oh. I'm fighting a really good guy. Mm. Um, he's a vet. He got more fights in the UFC than I got fights, and I know I'm going to knock him out. Um, I'm better than these guys. I right. just am. I know I am, Like, and I'm going to show it. I If if I show y'all my Rolodex in my phone of what, who I be punching on, they be like, Phil, who I take down, who I submit, I just got to go do it. I know I can do it. I'm just going to go do it. I need to stop second-guessing myself. I'm going to walk right to him. I'm going to touch gloves, and then – Two, three exchanges, he's out of there. I'm not. I'm better than him. I'm, I'm top five. I, I can fight any of those guys, and I just got to show it. So fuck all the talking. I'm gonna be on a three fight win streak this year. Bing, 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 and they're gonna be on me. Fuck Talk that just shit. win the next one. Every That's time. it. I just, I just want, I just want a Rolex. Just the, I just, just want this. I just want to, I just want a Rolex. Paul, look at my watch. Zoom in on my watch and zoom in on his watch. Hold on, I just hold want on, a Rolex. Hold on. I just want a Rolex. That's it. Just let, <laughs> just let somebody give it to you, man. Oh, you ain't get you. You ain't grab that. No, no, I grabbed this. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I'm don't saying say, like, don't let this one bother you. Cause this wasn't UFC money here, you know sir. Yeah. Nah, hell nah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's 
that's what I was talking about earlier, bro. T. But Woodley should have been like, I don't want nothing from you. But but speaking of that, Set how you feel? Chin. How you feel about these bare knuckle checks, man? Uh, they getting better, <laughs> better and better and better every time. First of all, you legitimize the sport, right? Because everybody before that was laughing at bare knuckle. Then they did that event. Where, Y'all ain't uh, know they 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 already starting to call me Dana Black. Talk to they laugh. Look, I want to. Man, it ain't my business. But if y'all knew what Mike was getting paid, man, I keep win I keep winning y'all these. Be sick, I keep man. winning these, and I've been building stuff. I got you know, I'm working with different companies and and putting my money in places and to establish a foundation and build and something that can continue to grow. Um, and uh, if I become a a platform holder for fighting events and have people and warriors fight for me under me someday and Let's it'd go. be all about excitement of the fight. You know, we bring this shit not not like they gave they were talking about I think in one championship they gave him a red car as care apparently because he didn't want to fight. Yeah. He's doing what he had to to survive. You are the guys who match make some fat fuck who wasn't <laughs> ready for no fucking fight. Talk that shit. You know, I want fucking warriors to want to come fight for me. Uh, I guess, you know, picking needles out of haystacks where some people are just weirdos and be like, I'll go to the, the fight. They got the slap shit. That's, That's crazy. Shit is what is that? Shit. What are we that doing? That is fucking absurd. But look, like that, I think, I think the world knows that is a foolproof business model. Mike Perry as a promoter, who the fuck ain't gonna want to watch? Who Come ain't gonna want to fight? Let's do so, let's Who's go. not gonna want to fight in that promotion? Who? Any every fighter coming up is gonna be like, nah, I'm fighting over there. Way be shout out to up. Jorge Masvidal, man. He was just yo, big shout out. I mean, to in Jorge. Orlando, big, showing mad big, love. Big shout out, and to he Jorge. treats his card and everyone who fought on his card with putting on a show. It yo, was great. Yo, it was a fucking great show. It was fucking. Great. He walked up to me, asked me what I thought about it. And I was like, almost every fight was entertaining that I saw. And then the people, I had people in the stands that came out. It was everybody liked the fights. Yo, big big shout out to Jorge, man. Um, didn't have to come in here, show love during uh, a big event that he had. Took time, uh, sat on the couch in the crib. This is my house, man. And once again, I appreciate you, man. Because to be honest. We didn't even want to have guests on here. We wanted it to be me. And we I. didn't even want to have your ass over here. <laughs> Not you. We didn't even want you over nah, here. Nah, look, Pete. Damn, dog. <laughs> and in general, it was like me and Ock. Like, but then we're like, nah, if we, let's the people that we vibe with, that yeah. that's gonna be like the the cool kids in the back of the classroom. Let's have these people up here chopping it up. Ain't no agenda. We just we just parlaying, you know. So and obviously, no, you I think it's that. really cool. Your podcast is set up like that and. You're going to have to start flying in celebrities Nigga. and, and giving them uh, five-star treatment, ch- stays. You're going to have to make more than just... And then they coming in here and you really bank it, ranking in the dough. We, you know? might yeah, bring yeah. It, we might bring in more celebrity if he stopped threatening to beat back teeth out. And shit yeah, and nah. Like. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. Yo, look, man. These NBA niggas are weird, bro. Like, And I'm a super fan of the NBA. Yo, that's that's why you're so upset. Cause like I was a big fan of Fifty Cent, and he was just here, and I went to the fucking spot, and I was a little drunk, and I let the wrong motherfucker try to bring me over there by him when he was like saying hi to people. As soon as I got up there with this other motherfucker, the the security guard was like, I was like, yeah, <laughs> it was it, it, it's so loud. I'm like, bro, but I know, bro, but damn, come on, let me. <laughs> What was I going to say? 50 ain't about to come back and say hi. So I'm like, damn, bro. I fuck with 50, bro. But it's I, who, I told the security guard, stop doing this. <laughs> it, it, it's, who, it's who brought I you mad. over. I was mad, too, because if I got to. Oh, you were there? Yeah. If I got to go up to go right up there. to him and have a conversation with him, he would have seen how I met 50 hella times um, from the same neighborhood I'm from. Know my family. I know his brother really well. Michael 2-5. Uh, rest in peace, George Yo, Peterson. Crazy. No, I, like I like I I done sat growing up, you know what I'm saying? Uh, on one sixty of North Conduit, the boulevard in Jamaica Queens. But um I was rest for in peace, it. George Peterson, legend from that neighborhood, my one of my closest friends, one of the best bodybuilders in the world, passed away two years ago wow. here in Orlando. Um 
Shout out to my cousin Tony two times. Shout out to Roddy. Shout out to Dion, Omar. But like those are the guys that put me on. But I remember this was like right before he blew up. I was like all like giggity about the nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I remember his brother used to like send me to the Chinese store and do all kind of shit and tell me, yeah, you're gonna meet him, Phil. You're gonna meet him. But I I, I seen Lamar Odom out there. Um, tons of people out there. But if I if I got to chop it up with him, I'd have been able to. And he'd be like, oh, I, immediately, you know, but I ain't going to be pressed. That's you. I, I you know guess I saying? don't have that. Because nah, that security but, guard wouldn't have been like. But in the same note, nah. But in the same note, like you said, I just think who did it, who entered, who kind of killed it. You know what I'm saying? The, the gentleman that. Yeah, it's it is what fuck it is. that it is. security. It is guard, what it is. Yeah, that nigga no, Mike no, no. It wasn't. No, no, it wasn't that. It wasn't this. Yeah. Oh. So, like, so I, what it was was like a nigga that. Thought he was that guy was like, yo, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna bring you to 50 niggas. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it oh, was my fault. I let that motherfucker yeah, you bring me have. over there. I didn't wait. In my time, I was also drinking. So. Because, G, but because off the strength, he gonna show you love, period, because this is your city. You know what I'm saying? So, like, well, but it, it, it is what it is. But, but it's all these good. NBA players, man, yo, man, I'm a super fan of the NBA. I'm, I don't give a fuck who I meet in a fight game. You know, respectfully, I show everybody love, but I'm not like that when it comes to these fighters, like, because the most of them are fucking weenies. But I'm not like, yo, that's so and so. They're all fucking nerds. They're all dorks anyway. NBA players, I remember I was in Miami. I was watching, uh, I forget which UFC, but it was uh, Jorge versus Gilbert. And Ozzy came up to me. He was like, yo, Phil, man, they need you in the fan experience. I'm like, me? Like, nigga, what? I'm like, okay, fuck, all right. And it's like Justin Gaethje, Holly Holm. So I'm like, damn, they ain't like fuck. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, damn, I'm gonna look crazy right now. Like, I'm gonna look crazy. I don't know if niggas wanna take pictures with me. I went down there, they were, but it's Florida. They were showing me love. Like, can I take? Pictures? I'm like, damn, that's cool. So I'm taking hell. Of, this is the most love I done got. So I'm soaking it all in, taking pictures with everybody. This is my first time in the UFC. They showing me love. I see Glenn Rice. I walk out for a second. I see. If you don't know who Glenn Rice is, kill yourself. <laughs> he got he had nachos in his hands. He's a football player, by himself. Paul. I'm like, I want yo, you to Glenn. live, Paul. I He's want like, you to live. What's up, man? Glenn, 6'10". Nobody's, I'm like, are y'all retarded? Do y'all see who the fuck this is? I'm running up to him. This kid's trying to take pictures of me. I say, hey, man, I love you, man. Give me one second, brother. I say, yo, man. I hug him. He's like, yo, man, yo, man, man. yo, man, I want you fighting, man. I'm like, yo, man. He's like, what's up? I said, yo, can I call my dad? He's like, yeah, man. I said, Dad, look, niggas, Glenn Rice. Bro, you like, FaceTime me with Tim Duncan oh, at his man. house. I forgot about that you shit. Was with Tim Duncan. I just met T Mac at the at the damn last BKFC I went to. Lit. Was he I, showing love? I had the belt with me. I was like, I was like, bro, you Tracy McGrady? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, Tracy? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. I was like, ah, <laughs> bro, I fuck with you, bro. Like, you like one of the GOATs for sure. He was at BKFC? Yeah, 57, oh, the last fight that I went and watched. It was uh, when Trout won the title. You didn't take a picture with him? You had the belt on the... the, the, uh, the I did. The most... I didn't ask for a picture because I'm not a bitch. No, nah, I, I, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. But look... I'm not finna post it either. No, like, no I feel you. I but... take a picture. I got followers. On... Who followed Tracy McGrady on Instagram? <laughs> Shit. Fucking... I seen Tim Duncan in... San Shit, Antonio, nigga sitting in a chair. When I say like the, the top of the chair, kind of his lower back, he had about four feet hanging out of the chair, trying to look normal. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga's like sitting here trying to like blend in. Nigga's like, Tim Duncan. He's like, mind you, he is looking at you eye level. He's sitting down in a chair. So I said, I can, when I see NBA players, especially guys from the early, late 90s, Tim's a legend. I, I'm like losing my shit. So I said, I said, yo, Tim, what up, man? I, I run up to him. I look, David Robinson. I said, what the fuck? The Admiral. So I go up to him, Al Jermaine Stern there. He don't know who 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 is who. He just there like Tall black guys. <laughs> you guys play lacrosse? But <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, so I see Tim Duncan. And I like, I'm I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd, bro, when I see Tim. Not, I'm not cool no more. Luke Rocco was there too. This is before you fought him. And I was I was kind of like trolling him. And he he knew. Of me uh -huh. and his brother was there. His brother was showing me how love, and Luke was just kind of like, "That's Luke." Like the whole time, like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, 
Like, look, look at me. Like, too cool for school, man. Like, but then next week, whatever happened, happened. But look, and so then I seen him. Got fucked up. And then I'm like, got his asshole. And I'm like, uh, knock his tooth out, he quit. But <laughs> I seen I seen him. <laughs> bro, I, I, be, see, I be throwing that bar into my raps all the time, bro. Nigga, I would too. That was the former champ, bro. Oh, man. Put out Wyman. I see Tim, and I'm like, I'm I'm never shook, ever, like, ever. I don't know what to say. I'm like, yo, man, I'm a big fan, man. Um, Tim, look, I'm in the UFC. Give me a second. Wait. <laughs> I'm like, and then he's like, I know who you are, man. I, I watch your fights, man. I'm a big fan. Of, like, the fighting game period. He's like, I was like, oh, shit, man. I was like, yo, man, Um, what's your Instagram? I, go, I don't have an Instagram. I'm like, damn, all right. Can I call my dad? <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, I FaceTime my dad. I'm like, look. And it's like Tim Duncan here, David Robinson here. It is what it is. He was just like happy I was showing the love. Fast forward, uh, night's over. Yeah. I come back to Texas for another event, a whole different uh, place. This, this one's San Antonio. The other one was Austin. Tim Duncan there again. I know it's Tim because the, the top of the chair on his lower back, there's about six foot of human outside the chair. And I'm standing up and he looking me in the face and he's sitting down. I said, oh shit, Tim. So... I thought we were best friends at this point. <laughs> and I thought I thought it was gonna be that energy. So I go in the fighter section, trying to be cool, and I see Tim. So I'm like, damn. And I look down, I'm like, and he's like, I'm like, ah, oh, damn, nigga don't remember me. I was like, fuck it. That's just how he act though. I know. I know <laughs> I, now I know. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. This is epic. Um and I don't give a fuck what y'all say, nigga. I'm a show, I'm a groupie when it comes to these NBA legends, man. Fuck y'all. But anyway, watching the fights. <laughs> I go in the back with Dana White, give him some shoes, watch uh the Devin Haney fight with him. Leave. Fight over. Versus Regis? Haney versus Regis. I forget who this I was. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention to who, right. but Dana brought me in the back. It was lit. Right. Fast forward, I leave. I'm walking down the street in Austin. If I'm lying, I'm dying. You know I'm not lying because I called you. I, somebody over about me. Hey, yo, Phil. Phil. God. What's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> Christ. I said, what's up, man? Yo, man, uh, what you doing? I said, I'm, my flight's 5 a.m., man. I said, I'm just going to the Omni. Yo, Tim said, come on up. I said, Tim who? Tim who? <laughs> he's, like, he's like, Tim Duncan. I said, oh, shit. Inside, I'm like, nigga, what? And he's like, I was like, this is Tim, this is nigga, this is like a city building. I was like, this is his house? Yeah, it's one of these. He said, come on up. I'm with my buddy. Nigga, we this he lives in the building. It's all his. The whole Yeah, the whole building is fucking his. So we go inside, nigga, it's Tim Duncan's house. The that most lit crazy, shit ever. Bro. We get upstairs, nigga. I can't even describe the house. They're sitting around the table. It's a bunch of like old white men, military guys, and Tim Duncan <laughs> and me. So then I'm like, dude, man. He's like, yo, man, you know, I saw you, man. You're super cool, but hanging out. I said, yo, man, my buddy just won a fight. Can I call him? He said, hell yeah, call your buddy. And Mike had just fucking won the belt. Or he just beat Luke Rockhold. So I FaceTimed. No, it was, it was Eddie. Oh, it was Eddie. It was Eddie. Because I went to the Haney fight. <laughs> yes, it was Eddie. So that's the fight I watched with, with Dana. So I, I FaceTimed. Um, I said, yo, man, tell my, tell my man um, congrats, whatever. So we FaceTimed and it's. Tim Duncan and fucking Mike with the belt and Abe oh, and everybody. Marshawn Lynch got to see this shit because I was front row at the Haney fight and I saw Marshawn. I was like, yo. I put, I started recording. I was like, Marshawn, what's up, bro? He won't turn around, bro. I'm like, bro, I'm the realest motherfucker you ever met, bro. But Facts. Besides <laughs> yourself, bro, I'm the realest motherfucker, bro. I just, I be fighting this shit. And he, <laughs> I said, I'm the realest motherfucker. And he like, that's that was all he gave me, bro. I was like, damn, bro. I wanted to fucking just get a recording, bro. And Tim Duncan bringing this motherfucker inside his business building house. That's crazy, bro. Yo, but but you see how cool Tim was. I wouldn't be cool, though, either. I would be more like Marshawn. And be but like, look, respectfully, he had the fights, though. Tap in with the fighters. You if you had the fights. I'm still on the edge of my seat. I'm waiting for the point where he hit a button. hundred bitches right now. <laughs> I'm really waiting for that point. I'm like, nigga, nah. That's the wrong. We were just. We that's were just, the wrong Tim. Duncan, we were just. Nah, Tim Duncan so low key. We were just playing ping pong. Every exactly. floor. That's what happened at in Tim his Duncan house. Is like OD. He had like four floors, and we were just. Like. I was on a rooftop playing ping pong, and then that was it. We were just parlaying. Nigga hit a button. And I was thousand taking books come life out. Notes, I, go, I, go. <laughs> I got you. You know what I'm saying? We were just. We were just playing ping pong. That's it. Uh huh. 
right. Ain't no bitches in sight. <laughs> yeah, <I got> right. <laughs> no liquor or bitches in sight. Just playing ping pong. It's like athletes just notice y'all probably. Well, I mean, oh, nigga, I was at a Starbucks and I seen Michael Jordan actually, and he was like. No, no, I'm just, he was like, yo, Phil Rowe. <laughs> yo, man. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, Phil Rowe, I thought I nah, told you. Nah. Don't follow me no more. <laughs> I thought I told you last time, nigga. <laughs> the fuck we doing here? Security. Next time. Hey, yo, wait. With the, yo, with yeah. the 50 cent. <laughs> yo, yo, why is mine, why is mine um, the most famous you celeb cool that people. fuck with me? It was as soon as I walked by. I mean, it was that awesome shit? I mean, Rick Ross was there, but I ain't see him. Right, Wiz Khalifa. I went in the back and Ray Trimmer. I played UFC, got beat up by George St. Pierre as my own character Damn. in front of Ray Trimmer. Ray Trimmer want me to play the game. I'm thinking we gonna play. It's one controller, bitch, and computer <laughs> mode is on extra hard. And GSP ain't miss nothing on my ass. <laughs> he took me down and choked me out or beat me up or something, and then. <laughs> the is those two little white boys brothers with all the tattoos, oh, the little man. island oh, boys. Man. <laughs> oh, man. They was going crazy for me, bro. Oh, the yeah, they, they was going man. crazy. They, yeah. they from Florida, right? Yeah, yeah. they from Florida, right? Yeah, yeah but but no, but, fuck that, Phil. Really? But Mike, Mike, Batsy man, fire for the kids. What's his name? And Joku. And Joku, the, the football player okay. for the Browns, he showed mad love. But you tapped in though, like this, like. Niggas know who you are now, clearly. I mean, <laughs> because <clears throat> I done been places and people act, still ask me about you. They still ask me about Jacare. Logan um, Paul be showing love. Yeah, I mean, you tapped in with all these guys. Side note, I do remember this briefly. Oh, what are you saying? My no, bad. I was going to say, would you, I, you can go and I'll ask my question after. Yeah, that, that, I remember when you were in Albuquerque for a little bit. Did you ever get to hang out with John? Like train with him, party with him? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, like my first day there was like it was great, man. Cause like I moved into this, man. I had just sold my house, or like it. We were in the process of selling it, and um, first house I ever bought or whatever. I was in the process of selling it, and I was running out of money. And I went to Jackson Wink to go to New Mexico to figure out what makes John Jones John Jones, and. uh we luckily had the same managers and, and all these fighters, all these broke ass motherfuckers from all over the world go there and they move in and they're like, I'm going to train. And I had like a, we had one of the bigger rooms. Shit. I, I met this kid. He was a good fighter. Ed Co uh, Cooper. Um, his last name. I can't. It's been a while, man. I hope he's doing good. But I remember coming out of that room. And the rings, the, uh, the cages was right below on the second story. I was on the second story. The cages were below. And I look over and John's in there. And we both look at each other like that. <laughs> early morning? Early morning? Probably like two in the afternoon. I don't know. And he was like, uh, I was like, oh. And he was like, oh. I was like, ah, shit, let's go, bro. I went downstairs. Said, what's up to him? Shit, I think... Chase Sherman's ass was sparring. I sparred Chase Sherman. I sparred That's John Jones. Random. I sparred John seven rounds. I sparred Chase a couple more. John, you know, um, and we was going. I just had the energy back. I was excited. Someone like John just give you energy. And he was smaller back then. John was huge. In the Chase sense of, was huge. But in the sense of, They're obviously, you were a welterweight, but... He he wasn't like two fifty. I was a strong one ninety two. Training every day at Jackson Wink, fighting. I was you know sparring the hundred and eighty five pound fighters who weighed two oh five. I remember I was sparring the one eighty five pound fighters who weighed you know two ten two oh five. A um, couple really big guys and, um, but we got in the cage one night. I sparred with him a lot and then. He took us out and, you know, if I go out with someone, you know, I don't know, man. I just, I like to get drunk. <laughs> I do. I get drunk, man. And just, 
I lose, I get loose, and uh, sometimes the first night I think I threw up. I had to. I was incredible. What a night, and and uh, <laughs> and I ruined it because of my, my throwing up. So watch your drinking. Don't be drinking too much, so you can enjoy more fruits of your labor. Because there was <laughs> there was some other fruits involved that I was just like, yeah, golly. See, I'm back on the edge of my seat. Ja, he the one. Um. Who taught me how to be a happily married man? He the one who introduced <laughs> yeah. me to my wife. We was at the cl- kind of like he didn't know her. We was just at the club. I walked in the club, just, just chill with John, and it was just Latori was right there. Wow! He looked at me. He looked at her, and he grabbed both of us and brought us together. Wow! By the wrist, and I picked up my girl. I didn't know that. That's I insane. picked her up. I bought her. She had a leopard skirt and a red shirt, and uh, and I bought her like a cranberry vodka. It's terrible. And, <laughs> and then we went out front and talked a little bit, and left together. And that's Shout your wife to with two John children. Love Jones, baby. Love forever. John the Love oh. Dr. Jones. Baby. Yo, bring it together for John Jones. John the Love Dr. John Jones. Oh, that's, that's crazy. crazy. I didn't know that. I didn't know how John I, Jones out here got like an undefeated record in making couples and shit. That was like, <laughs> man, what was that, man? Like five, six, I didn't five years that. ago, man. That's lit. I didn't know that. That's crazy. That's the matches he need to be made. Five or six <laughs> years ago that yeah. happened. What I was going to say, man, like, because uh, you was talking about Logan. And as dudes like you, I, y'all come across my brain because wrestling is always a thing and acting where it's like y'all have a big enough personality where I think it would translate mm. into that easily just because all the hot take shit that y'all normally do during like press conferences, like build up to the fight. I tell you what, man, wrestlers, I've heard some wrestlers make some good points. Uh, one wrestler was being asked, does he think any... UFC fighters are in there that could be a uh, champion over in WWE. And it's like, who cares? Who wants to? Uh, and the guy <laughs> was like, shit. no, but seriously, listen, those guys are incredible athletes. Absolutely. Their bodies take fucking beatings and they teach their bodies how to go through that over and over again. Fighters, we get fucked up in one night and we're good for three to five months. We're like getting good again in order to do it. We're preparing our bodies for training. I mean, I mean, even when you kill you, when you whoop on somebody, like when you're beating them, your, your shins and kicking them or blocking kicks, uh, a wrestling motions twisted your neck and got your back, your back be sore for a couple of days. You know, you can get wheeled through the airport as a winner or a loser. Been there both times. Been there both times. Uh Uh-huh. Fuck you, Gabe Green. I beat your ass. I think that's a big issue on the fighters sometimes, bro. Like, I think sometimes, like, when you know, like, niggas be going in and they get, they they block a kick or something in their shin, I think sometimes you like to train up. Niggas get, how many times do they get kicked in the leg in the train up? You know what I'm saying? How many times do they block this? They block this, right? And they breaking their body down. But by the time the fight is happening, shit, the body done broke all the way down. You know what's crazy too? What he just, I didn't really think about. But I'm a big fan of, of wrestling as well. But life even, is like WWE. It, it is. It, 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 it really is in that metaphor in the that. sense of you got to build yourself up. You got to talk adversity. your way to the top. You got to back it up. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> he says everything what? is wrestling. Oh, yeah. Everything is wrestling. Everything is politics is wrestling. And, yeah. Like, everything is I wrestling. I mean, wrestling is politics. And, yeah. you know, it's favoritism. It's it's how do you win the people over yeah. with your words and with your entertainment and your talents. And, and like, um, I met, you know, EJ. And I went and I saw someone else. Shout out to EJ. That's shout out boy, to Beer man. Games too. I was, shout out to Zach. Uh, we went and saw someone, and I didn't know. You know, we was in the the raw and watching, and it was crazy because when you walk in, you're like, "Damn, shit look kind of dead." And I was like, "Low key, I bet everybody in there watching that shit. Full stadium, inside. They're not walking around getting snacks. They got all that shit already. They was there early, probably. They got. They done bought." They got signs made. They in there interacting with the night 
and like I feel like whoever the crowd go for end up winning a match sometimes. And we That's was watching somebody and they was flipping and clacking bodies and jumping off of shit and hitting each other. And they 250 pounds. Big dudes. I'm like, damn, I know they sore. You, was talk- <laughs> you said he was coming out after this? He ain't coming out. Yeah, nah. He sore as a motherfucker in the hotel room. Like That's why they be drinking. They get but killed he happy up. as hell. He, he hurting, but he's sipping on whatever he's sipping on, and he chilling. Ric Flair used to say, I could go all night and just a little bit longer. Nigga would do a 60-minute Broadway match, go out to the bar, fuck three bitches. <laughs> Ric Flair was a fucking legend. But I was. it's funny enough, y'all brought it here on the Humble, but I was talking about to them earlier, like wrestling and fighting in general is so interlocked in how the business works because like when wrestling first started it was niggas like fighting each other every going town to town fighting each other at the circus then they realized that yo we fucking each other up for real why don't we just work together and i'll win sometimes you win sometimes let's take it easy but they don't know what's going on right and then they started doing it like that. And then someone decided his name is Gorgeous George. Yeah, some of us fighters would have been like, I win sometime, you win sometime. No, fuck that. I ain't <laughs> in it. But fuck so, that. So I then beat what, your ass. So what happened Talk was so what happened was somebody was like, yo, to get more people to come out, I'm gonna like play this character of the role of the bad guy, right? And then they're gonna come out to root to see me lose. It was a guy named Gorgeous George. He used to dress up like a gay dude. He used to dress up like a, a woman. He put on Fire makeup. Them he put on Bottom makeup. Up. And he come out Bottom and he wrestle. Up. And everybody, boo, this fucking sissy. Fuck out of here. He get in the ring. He look at a mirror. He spit at the crowd. You ugly people. You ugly. I'm so pretty. You all are so ugly. It's your favorite one, bro? Nah, nah. But, but look, look, look. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> but who, who does that sound like? He went to the back. He went to the back. Who was standing back there? Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali was he saw through the, the facade and he was like, Yo, oh, I mean that's crazy how you did that. And he mm. told him, like, if you make them hate you, it's a type pay. of swagger that he has. For sure. I mean, look what The Rock did with his. He went into movies and he can act look what acting is. It's like how do you handle any situation and how good could you stay facing it? Like Yeah. I, I could I commit could. to the role. But see, here's yeah. the thing. The thing is that's what, hard committing to the role. What you don't know that you do. And why you so captivating? Usually I talk up a storm when I'm on the podcast and shit. But I just been sitting here listening and enjoying y'all talking and shit. Because when you say shit, half the time, like, we'll be laughing or whatever. You can tell you mean the shit, what that you're saying. When you reminisce on whatever story you're telling, you can see your mind, like, go there and you're actually talking. Sometimes you don't even hear niggas laughing. And that type of passion that you have when you speak. That's the type of shit that comes across in movies and wrestling. It's kind of lost nowadays because, you know, whatever. Pe- everybody kind of knows it's fake. But back in the day, that's just, you didn't need a character. You didn't need a fucking, um, you know, fake shit. They would just get on that microphone and tell you how they actually felt. Like, if you talk to St- Stone Cold Steve Austin, to him, it shit is still real to him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's why you would come across in the mm-hmm. movies and shit. Right. Because if you find that role... That just means something to you. Fire. You ain't even acting no more. You Fire. just no, fucking talking to the I would love to gang play gang. some like gangster shit. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. Play. Actually, I'm supposed to be doing a movie this year. What? Shout outs to that. Shout outs to no, shout I'm out to t- Mike Perry getting the sad card. <laughs> I already signed. A, I already signed some paperwork. And I'm supposed to be put into a movie, and they're gonna give me some part, bitch, and I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> oh, Fire. Yeah. So that's fire. They gave that nigga Connor. I think Connor been turning down movie roles for fifteen years straight, and they gave that nigga the perfect role. So the perfect role. But like, but look, no, man. They said they said Brokeback Mountain too. Look, fire. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's nah. crazy. Did you see Connor's the movie? Or the movie? I haven't seen. It hasn't haven't come out it. yet. Oh, but okay. that's the thing. I'm going. I wouldn't watch that bullshit. I don't give a fuck about these remake bullshit movies. But I will watch it because they Connors made some it. shit like that old people watched back in the day. Dave was like, who even liked Footloose back then? Yeah. <laughs> What's that shit yeah, called? Like, I, I want to like? get an acting bad, man, but first I got to keep stretching these cats, putting people on the ice, and then and then hopefully those doors will open up. Keep the main thing the main thing. Phil, you know, you got Talk your shit. I like that y'all been saying that because you get the fucking opportunity. You got to let people know. Obviously, you don't want to dig a hole for yourself. Your words can do that, but they can also... You know, you believe in it. You manipulate the things around you. 
in in a good way and you just show people a good time and like you're super charismatic and and funny about how you come off like you do shit that I just could not do like <laughs> arm battle somebody on an airplane some old lady old man or whatever I'm like Phil's chilling with these people they're talking to him he's at, he mu- they must be having a great time if I did that shit the security market <laughs> gonna come over <laughs> fucking lock me down real quick cause you probably try to win the arm battle but, for real but, you know, he be but, doing it but look, he be going about? in I was gonna say remember when we was talking about like People, they only want to see you as the first thing they knew you as. Yes. Yeah. Like, which I think is co- kind of cool about the room because I think that's, you. if you hang around people who do multiple things, they're able to see you in a light where it's like, you do multiple, you can do multiple. That's real shit, shit man. Like, it's like they can see, a, like, I can look at, because I do multiple shit, you know what I'm saying? I can see that Mike can fight, but then I was just, man, I, he could probably be an actor or something like that. Yeah. I can see the other talents that are. And it's that, funny because, you, know you know what it was? People could see that in you early. Like, I remember watching Ariel Hawani and him bringing you on and all that kind of shit. Like, people just took it, like, of course it was your fighting, but you just had a personality early. It's not the same type of person. Like, you could see what he does, but it's not the same thing. But it's something there. It's like something that makes you want to hear more. Like, it, I mean, it, take it, your hobbies far. It, like, it's not even, you, like. you know what I'm saying? Like, he's obviously charismatic in his own way. He's obviously captivating in his own way. Like, mm-hmm. these ain't sound bites you know what i'm saying like he say something he mean it you know yep. and that's why people gravitate to you and that's why people will always gravitate to you that's why people will always be in your corner but like i t- i've taken a lot from you in the fight game man i'm not just saying that ain't no corny shit that's a fact you know what i mean i was in your corner when i was one and two as a pro when i was two and two as a pro you had me didn't have to have me there same thing with jacare i learned i learned the fight game and essentially through y'all, I did. You know, I seen the highest your, wins. It was your, the reason you were there is because I didn't see you as that. I saw you for what I wanted you there for. And it was a cool type of swagger to have on my team that like up, uplifted my energy. It's like, you know, you knew how to be around and carry yourself around people. And like even, even make people happy. Like sometimes I'm awkward. So I'm like. Shit, Phil's a good distraction. <laughs> He'll be around. I appreciate and if it. I'm feeling some t- if I'm like, if I'm like, you know, being, um, what do they call those people that you got introverts, you got extroverts. Exactly. That When did those words Introvert really hit the, the market? Is the- <laughs> those words hit the market like a couple years ago, right? Yeah. yeah. People start, oh, I'm like, oh, that's what they call people who be a little <laughs> weird sometimes. <laughs> an introvert. <laughs> sometimes I get introvert mode. Phil's happy with everybody. He just... That's <laughs> <laughs> my guy right there, man. Shit, you ever seen? Uh... <laughs> Yo, I went to Tim Duncan's house. <laughs> <laughs> but but we but we learn, man, and, and and we learn and we grow with each other, man. And like I said, man, but I learned a lot, and it's crazy. This point in my career, cause I even said, I'm like, man, these names rubbing off on me a little bit, man. Cause tell us some of like, the stuff you learned. Now I'll be like, fuck him. I'm gonna beat his ass. <laughs> and as crazy as That's cliche as it sounds. Yes, man. And for a long time, I would be like, man, but Mike, but he's good at jujitsu and he, but I'm going to fuck him up either way. You know, and I'm like, just because you say that, don't make it, in, in my head, I'm like, just because he say that, don't make it true. But, but just because you say, it, just because you thinking you boosting him up, and I get that too, because I had issues with doing that. And it's like, I would boost my opponent. And when, when my friends want to come around, the homies want to come around and be like, yo, Mike, you going to fuck his ass up, bro. Fuck him. He ugly. You gonna, when, he, when he do this shit, you the way that you do this shit. And I'd be like, yeah. Back in the day, I used to be like, yeah, but he's good at this or he's good at that. Now I'm like, fuck that. Fuck anything that. It ever looked good that he did because he ain't do it against me. Talk and that I'm about shit. To, the, I'm about to do all the shit that I do good. I'm about to do to him and he ain't oh gonna like God. it. How about that? And I don't care who it is. Right. See? That's nah, what the fuck but, I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. But, he meant that shit. He meant that shit. And that's the thing. You don't know how cool you sound just saying that shit. And you meant that shit. But, that's what but, I'm talking about. But look, see, that's it, you see how that's what I learned over the years but because like I got that from my friends, right? They would say, Phil, you gonna I'm like, how you know? You don't train. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I would always dismiss it. But like Paul, Phil, you belong there, nigga. Like you train eight hours a day, every day. You better than him. And now I'm at the point where I, I truly I'm congruent with it. I believe it. Back then, 
it's not like I didn't believe it. I wanted to be in the UFC. I'll be honest. I just didn't know if I could make it. And I worked hard as fuck to get there. I just was would tell myself, like, man, I ain't I ain't wrestled since I was four. I'm gonna try my best. I wanna be there, but I didn't know. Right. And then I'm, oh shit, I'm here. Fuck. Then when I We both had a big turning point right before you went in. Cause I got mad at your ass because you were going in. And I had been in there and I had had some ups and downs already. And I was mad at you and I tried to fight you for real Facts. at the gym. <laughs> and it was just a funny moment to me that I remember like something changed that day, right after that moment. Like I obviously went through some rocky parts and uh, we both came out much stronger uh, on the outside of it. Um, and you were a big part of that for me. Even though I tried to fight you the way that everything went, um, I think you know why I tried to fight yeah. you too. Is because yeah. I was like, you're going to the UFC. This shit is serious. And so I literally tried to act like I was not your friend at the gym. And I tried to fucking fight you. And I we, we went all over the gym. And um, I mean, you just kind of stuck and moved a little bit. You didn't even try to fight me. You didn't even get mad at me. And that's what I wanted. I wanted you to get fucking mad and, and fight. And that. But now you're you're cleverly picking your way and doing what you need to do as perfect as you can because you know there's not another shot for grown ass men. We've we've learned our lessons in our younger ages, our twenties. We learned. It's my man of steel year. Are you a little older than me? Yeah, I'm, I'm one year. Uh, a little less than a year, but almost a year. So I'm 32 now still until September. Damn. And then, so I'm like, this is my man of steel year. This is my Shaq year. And so I'm just, this is the image I think of when I fucking say that. I'm like, it's Shaq on Loki Orlando Magic because I'm in Orlando. Facts. And when we had that fight, man, it's like the way you came out of it on the other side, you were very stern. You became this, you know, gun toting ass man who carries himself in a way that's not to be fucked with and i was like absolutely it's like a business gangster it was like you know i play i play the book by the rules i'm following my sides of the rules and if you you know there are rules that say i can pop your ass if you fuck around with my rules or whatever with with the rules that are set place for all of us and i really took that from you Talk that shit. No, I appreciate it, man. And we've both grown as men since that time, man. And like I tell you all the time, I tell you all the time when I see you, man. I said, bro, I'm I'm proud of you. I'm happy for you. I'm not the, there ain't an ounce of hate in my heart, man. When I when people talk about Ian, I'm I, you know what I say? I said, look, Ian is undefeated. He got a country behind him. He never lost. Let him be great. You know what I mean, let him. There's enough. You know what I'm saying? Like, let him. What, what y'all hating on Ian for? I ain't never had a country behind me and been undefeated. But you wouldn't but, mind fighting him and taking all the shots. I wouldn't. If you I could. I wouldn't. Would, but the, you know, but, but the point love. is, I don't, I don't hate on nobody, right? I, if that's what God got intended for him, do your thing. I'm climbing too, man. If we at the top, cool, I'll see you one day. I want to see him make the most money possible. I want to see you make the most money possible. I ain't, they ain't an ounce of hate in my heart. But for me now, to see where I've come full circle and see where you are, bro, it's is when you really sit and think, right? Look at your crib, nigga. <laughs> like as a as a fighter, the way you shape those who look at you mm -hmm. as a fighter, you have to look at other fighters. This is this is how you promote a fight. You have to look at other fighters and what they want and how they shape their viewers. And if they have some shit that you like, you know, like oh, if you doing something and you you turning a bunch of men into cucks or you thinking that they can allow themselves to do this, you know, you're not teaching everybody right. Obviously, I guess we all make mistakes, but I guess people got to speak up for their the actions. Sometimes those stories get huge hits and yeah. people want to hear what people think about things. And, and I'm not saying... Because obviously, like I said, you don't want to dig holes for yourself. But you have to talk your way into opportunities. Absolutely. 
You Closed do, mouths you, don't get fed. No, nah, you got to be ready for those. True. You got to be ready for those opportunities, man. True. And I and I am, and 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 I feel you are, and I feel like everybody in this room is. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep setting goals, and I'm gonna keep knocking them down. Mm. And ain't nothing that nobody can do to stop me. And I really, and I really, really sat and think about. it. I'm like, man, look at the people that tap in with me. People be like, I've been training with Alex before the UFC. I've been training with Alex Pieta in since LFA. You know what I'm saying? Like. There's a reason that like these cats tap in with me. You know what I mean, there's a reason that I can hit up Leo. There's a reason I can hit up these guys. I belong here, right? And if I'm able to win at this level, fighting how I'm fighting, I know he know the people that train with me know what I can do, right? And I'm still winning, and I'm still finishing fights, right? Ain't nobody punching on me yet. The second I I want people to study my the guy that is about to fight me. Abe said I can't say it until we figure or whatever. Go watch my fights. Please study them. Because I still haven't fought half of what I can do. And I'm winning. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go out there. I'm going to keep knocking people out. And I'm going to. And eventually, I'm going to contest for that strap. No matter how they cut it and slice it, man. But... Talk Mike, shit. I really appreciate you pulling up, man. No, um, thank you guys for having me. Any anytime you, you want, talk. man. My platform is your platform. There's huge news this week coming for for this podcast. We live in the same neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? Anytime, I don't care where this platform go, it's your platform the same way, man. I'm here a lot because of you as well, and I let the world know that. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you being here, man. Nothing but love. Cheers, bro, my brother. Up. Give up for Mike, Cheers, yeah. bro. I appreciate y'all for having me, bro. Yeah, you got to come back. I ain't Shout even asked my questions. Yeah.